Hello friends. This is God of Fiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had Maelstrom in the World of Devils? Naruto X High School DXD. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Running a hand through his damp hair, he released a sigh of despair. He opened his eyes, revealing brilliant azure pools. He looked around the room he was currently in. A completely white and very spacious bathroom. A lot larger than he really needed. Not a single thing out of place. He looked at the mirror that was fogged up so he could not see his image. How did I even get here? He wondered aloud. He wiped at the foggy mirror to reveal wild, spiky blonde hair that hung limply on his head. Three whisker marks on each cheek and a blue gaze that had an almost ethereal glow. Uzumaki Naruto stared at himself in the mirror and mused to himself. Such a cruel fate for the hero of the fourth grade shinobi war. He would have never thought he had to go to school again. He didn't need grades, all he need was the ability to kick ass and take names. Alas, fate is a cruel mistress. Sighing again he took a once over of his reflection. He could say he actually liked what he saw. In his youth he had always been the stumpy one, the midget. He was also somewhat malnourished when he was younger. He now stood at six feet one, which was quite a bit taller than most of the people his age in this city. His body was well defined, built for speed and power. His body was molded for combat and had a nice V-shape that many men had tried and failed to get. While looking at himself, he thought about his current predicament. The blonde was in a city known as Kuo. He had landed here after tackling Madara and telling Kakashi to send them someplace so far that they would never come back. After witnessing Madara's power, he knew that there was only one real way to save everyone from the bastard, and he couldn't let anyone else make that sacrifice. It took a lot of convincing before Kakashi finally conceded. It was Naruto's choice, since only he had a real chance of surviving the dimensional leap that had to be big enough to warp away the newest Jubi Jinchuriki. Naruto was honestly surprised when he found that he was not dead. It was unexpected. He kind of figured it was a badass way to go so he wouldn't have minded dying. After drying himself off, he headed out into the lounge room. The room was absolutely huge. He was in the penthouse suite in a very modern building. Modern is not the word that Naruto would use. The stuff that Naruto saw were freaking space age to him. Everything was designed in weird, beautiful patterns of modern architecture, and there were waterfall walls. He didn't even know something like that could exist. There was also a very large television protruding from the wall that was turned off. He would turn it on if he knew how to work the thing. There was also a pool table a game which he had yet to learn how to play, near the corner of the room. The floor had white tiles that seemed to reflect everything perfectly with a beautiful shine. The kitchen seemed to have every cooking utensil you would ever need to make just about anything you would desire. He was actually glad for that, he seemed to establish a love for cooking on his adventures with Jiraiya. Seems that there were other things to eat other than ramen in the world, who knew? Making a long trek to the bedroom, due to the sheer size of the lounge room, he finally made it and came to a halt when he saw what was on the bed. Naruto took to glowering at the school uniform that sat on the bed, as if taunting him, he clicked his tongue unapprovingly. He let out yet another sigh of dismay as he put the clothing on, once on, he looked at his reflection yet again, but this time in a full-length mirror. Naruto was kind of impressed. Sure, it wasn't as beautiful as his orange jumpsuit but it was a start. He inspected the clothing that was on him. He had a choice between this and the regular uniform. His was slightly modified in design. Vibrant red highlights and a darker dress shirt than the plain white. The blazer and slacks he wore were a lot darker as well, jet black instead of faded black. The tie remained the same. Turning to look at the bed, he weighed the pros and cons of just going back to sleep. After a few seconds in thought, he decided against it. The person who had done this all for him wanted him to go to this school and he did owe him or her for doing all of this for him. He frowned slightly at that. He honestly had no idea who the person was that was helping him. He also had no clue how it would benefit this mystery person. He had not been in this dimension for two days before some rough looking guys came up and told him to come with them. Naruto couldn't do much else other than follow their orders, he was simply too weak after the goddamn painful trip he went through to get here. With a bit of trepidation, he followed them and came to the hotel that he was sitting in right now. They left him some of the essentials he needed, such as food and hygiene products. Then they just left. This was the third day he was here, and it was a lot more comfortable sleeping in this downright amazing bed, 
as opposed to the grassy floor in some park, groaning in pain for a few hours before passing out and then having to wake up to some random buff dudes demanding things from you. Yeah, not the greatest day of his life. Last night was much more accommodating. In truth, Naruto had been in very few apartments that weren't a complete dump. After leaving the orphanage he ended up having to stay in the seediest part of Konohagakure in a very, very shitty apartment. Where he spent most of his life in fact, after pain had destroyed the entire village, he had actually been offered one of the biggest tents that they had to offer, on the count of the fact that he was, the hero of Konoha. He politely declined, reasoning that a few families could fit in there and it would still be spacious, instead of just one family that was cramped in the standard tent. He didn't need the room, he was used to being in worse living conditions than a regular sized tent so he didn't want to take anything more than he needed. Coming here and looking at his current living conditions actually made him slightly uncomfortable, this was a bit much wasn't it? He looked to the window which was the entire wall of the living room. He was living in the more urban area of this city. The academy he had to go to was pretty close all things considered, 15 minutes walk maybe. He felt weird looking out on the city. This building was an ungodly size. Well, ungodly for him anyway. Walking down to the door, he took the key card off the shelf and put on some black sneakers. Opening the portal, he left out to his new life. Can't be as crappy as it was in the academy, right? He thought to himself weakly. XXX. Okay, it is going to be a lot worse. Naruto said aloud, his eye twitching as he looked at his timetable. Why the hell did he need to learn this stuff? Naruto was never really the academic type, so seeing the subjects that he had to do were his weakest ones was beyond annoying. He really felt like punching something right now. After looking at the timetable in his hands with disdain for a few more seconds, he decided it was best for his sanity if he just pocketed it. Sighing dramatically, he rounded the corner and saw that he was at his destination. Walking through the school gates he looked up at the main school building, to find it was enormous. Seriously, what was with this world with its need to make everything huge? Naruto was quite taken with its design. It made the academy back at home look like a small children's playground in comparison. Looking around he saw that most of the students here were female. Very few guys in sight at all. Upon his arrival, the students seemed to have stopped everything they were doing to look at the blonde. Maybe it was the color of his hair? It seemed like it was very rare to have a blonde hair color in this town, or perhaps it was this world. A few whispers could be heard, as well as the giggling from girls who were in groups. Naruto didn't really know what was funny, there might have been something wrong with his appearance, he looked himself up and down then looked at the still giggling girls, then back at himself, he shook his head. I just do not understand girls he thought to himself, as he walked through the main entrance. Walking through the main hallway, which was also very large, he decided to head to his homeroom. Much easier said than done. Walking down the hallways, that was decidedly a labyrinth made for the specific reason to be an inconvenience to everyone who attended, got tedious after he got lost for the third in time. After a while, he decided that the gods hated him. They might even take pleasure in seeing him have a bad time. Surely this couldn't have been karma. He was a hero for Kami's sake. Could he not just have a somewhat normal day? As he finished his inner ramblings he came to a halt at the door he was trying to find for the last 10 minutes. Well, small miracles. Opening the door he stepped in to find all the idle chatter slowly coming to a stop as he walked in. The teacher saw him and threw him a wonderful smile. Ah. You must be Uzumaki-kun, just in time, she said delicately. Oh uh, yeah that's me. He said somewhat uneasily. Wonderful, why don't you introduce yourself? She asked pleasantly, making room for him to come stand at the front, next to her. Sure. He shrugged, walking to the center stage, he saw everyone was looking at him. Naruto gained some of his confidence back and quickly slipped into his optimistic attitude. Hey, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, hope we get along well he said with a slight wave and a grin. Time to get his friendly personality back on. Sort of sucked being so gloomy for the few days he was here. Naruto walked to his designated seat and promptly fell asleep as soon as he could, stealthily of course. XXX Naruto sat in a meditative pose under a tree. Now that he wasn't being swarmed with questions from his classmates he could focus on doing things that needed to be done. The class all seemed to believe him to be a foreigner due to his sun-kissed blonde hair and blue eyes every one of them asking questions at the same time. He could barely take it so he made a quick retreat as discreetly as he could, which was very difficult considering that everyone's attention was on him. He managed somehow and he was finally doing what he was trying to get up to since he got here. Sadly, he had been both too busy and too exhausted. 
His breathing slowed down and he let his mind wander into a dark abyss. Once he cleared his mind he reached to pull some of his chakra out. He frowned as he felt only a trickle as opposed to the vast ocean it was before. As he tried to pull on the small amount of chakra he suddenly felt a very sharp pain. Wincing, he stopped pulling on the chakra. Okay, so he should probably wait a little bit before he tries that again. Trying to think of a solution, he cleared his mind again. Think, think, come on, what would Karama do? He stopped thinking at that. Kayubi, he mentally screamed. He tried to calm down his thoughts once more. After five seconds of slow breathing, his mind cleared. Slowly digging into the confines of his mind he mentally spoke to the beast. Karama, I need your help, stop sleeping and talk to me. Silence. Slowly, Naruto tried again. Karama, if this is a joke I swear, he let the threat hang in the air, but was again met with silence. He started panicking. Where the hell was that damn fox? Smoothing out his increasingly worried thoughts, he delved back into his mind. He calmed himself until he heard something he thought he wouldn't hear again. Something that made his eye twitch. Perverted giggling. Naruto again calmed himself, now was not the time to get worked up. Again he heard the giggling. Then more giggling. Slowly it became more than he could handle and because of his current emotional distress and irritation. He couldn't help himself. Running silently behind the trio responsible, he let himself take in their appearance. One was somewhat regular looking hair with glasses, which seemed to be fogged up. The other was bald, and was currently drooling onto the ground. The last one was, difficult to describe without saying the word regular. He was making a fondling the air with his hands and repeating, Oh pie, oh pie, oh pie. Like a mantra. Each had their own respective peepholes. Naruto was taken aback. They reminded him of his godfather, bless his perverted soul. Naruto might not have been too bothered by them doing this, but right now, they were so very obnoxious. Thinking on what to do, a proverbial light bulb went off in his head. The menacing gleam in his eyes would have chilled someone to the bone had anyone been unfortunate enough to see it. Naruto walked over to the bald pervert merrily. He sat to the left of him and gave him a nice slap on the back and addressed them all. Hi you guys, having a pleasant time? He asked jovially. All three turned their heads over to the new speaker and looked at him weirdly. Who are you? Asked the one with glasses, looking annoyed at having to stop his peeping. Oh I'm just a new student. Naruto responded good naturedly. I couldn't help but noticing you all humbly admiring the beauty of the woman body. He said loudly. The trio didn't even notice the volume of his voice due to them being absolutely ecstatic. Yes, another of our kind, exclaimed the ordinary looking one, who currently had stars in his eyes. Finally, another male WHO understands the glory of the woman bodies, cried the bald one, who had anime tears streaming down his face. You will be the perfect ally, with your good looks, you will be able to help us get beautiful girls that we will ravish endlessly. The one with glasses said with zeal as he adjusted his glasses. If one were able to see through the eyewear, they would have seen the calculated gleam that his eyes held. Already he was going through plans on how to accomplish such a feat. Naruto sweat dropped, he did not know he was going to get this kind of reaction. He watched as they all started to hug and cry in excitement at what the glasses wearing pervert said. They all no doubt thought the plan was foolproof. His ears pricked when he heard footsteps approaching them. It would have been too quiet to hear them because of the decibels the perverts were reaching. Naruto was able to hear it because he had very sensitive hearing, and his ability to focus on something with his advanced hearing. Right now he was drowning out their cries and focusing on the footsteps because if he heard the full brunt of their yells he would no doubt be wincing. Once he determined the women were coming dangerously close, he stopped the pervert's shouts with his next statement. You guys might want to put those plans on hold, Naruto said, he then made a motion to behind Trio. The three stopped and turned just in time to see a mob of teenage girls, who all had an aura of pure rage that consumed the surrounding area around them. Some were holding kendo sticks, whilst others were holding tennis rackets and baseball bats. The three paled to an unhealthy shade of white, and turned back to their blonde companion. Only to find nothing. Turning their heads back slowly, they made whimpers as the women walked slowly towards them. You guys just never learn do you? The girl at the front said with a voice that could freeze hell over. She was holding a kendo stick and was testing its weight with some slow practice swings. Making a slow gait towards them, she was followed by her other companions. It was not a good day to be Matsuda, Motohama or Issei right now. XXX a certain blonde was sitting in a tree, trying not to fall off because he was laughing too hard. 
Hearing the perverts as they wailed in pain was a certain schadenfreude that even Naruto was not immune to. Wiping a stray tear away, he decided he should leave before he actually feels bad for those guys. Leaping nimbly off of the tree, he was about to make a dash for class before he was late. He stopped however, when he saw something that caught his eyes. Naruto looked up to the window that was on the second story of the main school building. Looking down at him was perhaps one of the most beautiful women that Naruto had seen in his young life. A woman that looked to be around his age. The first feature he was noticed was the long, flowing crimson hair that looked as smooth as silk. It reminded him of his mother's hair, but the woman standing behind the window had hair with a much more vibrant shade of red, that seemed to reflect light. The second feature he noticed was definitely the woman's considerably large bust. Despite their size there was not a single hint of sag, in fact they seemed to be giving gravity the finger with their perkiness. He felt bad that that was a feature he noticed so fast, but he was a healthy teenage boy. Spending time with a guy who was perhaps one of the most perverted men in the world had turned into a pervert it seemed. He mentally shoved those thoughts away as he noticed she was looking at him. Her gaze seemed to be transfixed on him, which is why he noticed her beautiful green and turquoise blue eyes. They seemed to go a dark shade of blue towards the top and the orbs seemed to refract light. She was absolutely stunning. Naruto saw that she was studying him, and he felt like he should do something. So, almost without thinking, he brought a wide smile to his face and waved towards her. She looked surprised, but then let a small smile play itself onto her features and waved a delicate hand back at him. Hearing the bell, Naruto sagged and decided to get his last couple of useless classes out of the way before taking a rest in his room's spa. He hadn't tried it out, but he doubted that it was going to be anything less than premium quality. How much did his room cost for his stay? He almost shivered at the thought. It would have to have more zeros in its paycheck for a week than a year's worth of ramen would cost. He almost grimaced at that thought, but settled for shaking his head as he trudged his way to class. XXX. Akano, called a smooth voice. Hi, Rias, said the addressed woman, now identified as Akano. Who is that boy? Rias pointed to the blonde that looked rather dejected as he headed towards the entrance of the main school building. Era era, that's the new foreign student. He is in class 2B and this is his first day attending. Said Akano in a pleasant tone. Her violet eyes took on a mischievous look. Are you stating claims on him already? She said in a sultry tone of voice. Rias ignored her best friend's teasing nature and the obvious double meaning, but still answered, perhaps I should. She said in obvious thought. In truth, she was not really thinking about adding him to her peerage, she could barely sense any magic coming from him, if any at all. However, he did pique her interest, and not only because she had never seen him before. She had a feeling about him, she was not even sure what she was having a feeling of. Yet, she couldn't help but think that something was different about him. Oh my, what a pity, he would have looked absolutely delicious, screaming in delight at my hands, Akano said in a husky voice, as she put a hand to her blushing face. Rias ignored her again. She turned to the shower room while taking off her clothes, not at all bothered by Akino's presence. She decided to put the thoughts about the blonde in the back of her mind. XXXA content sigh escaped Naruto's lips as he sat on a bench chair in the park where he first entered this strange world. He had been here for around a week now. School had been strangely tiring throughout the week, even though he was asleep for most of the classes. He chalked it up to the exhaustion that his body seemed to be in after coming here. It was as if all of his previous strength had been drained. Right now, he was in his weakened state and he wasn't sure when, or if, his body would fully recover. He had stayed awake during history class to hear about the world he was now in, and it seemed to be vastly different compared to his world. Apparently he is in a country called Japan. This is a very small country compared to some of the others that are outside of its borders. In this world, they had a huge amount of technology and weaponry that Naruto never thought anyone would be capable of making. It was actually pretty scary thinking just how powerful of weapons this place had. Through technology alone, these people were capable of making bombs that could rival the Jubi's tailed beast bomb. That was impressive. Not only were the bombs they made having a brief job working in espionage for the white haired pervert, so it was natural that he got the complete rundown of how to lie and manipulate others to his will. Naruto never felt good about lying or manipulating, but he did it when he had to. He did not even consider telling them the truth. There was absolutely no way that they would believe him. His story wasn't even plausible to him, and he lived through it. Naruto decided he should try to probe some information from these girls, asking them all about Japanese culture amongst other things, claiming that he was clueless about all of Japan's customs. 
they were happy to tell him everything he wanted to know. Truthfully he didn't know why these girls had asked him to hang out with them. Sure he was the new student and all, but these girls seemed a lot more interested in him than they should be. Naruto was never overly popular with the ladies in his youth, it was largely due to how loud, crass and overall obnoxious he was. In his three-year training trip, he smoothed out his act a little bit with the ladies. He wouldn't claim to be Casanova, but he was pretty awesome with flirting. He never flirted with Sakura Chan, because she would punch him into next Sunday, like she did every other time. After a few hours the girls seemed to be happy with how much shopping they all did while dragging him around. Naruto himself needed some clothes, having nothing but his destroyed orange jumpsuit, and his school uniform, when he went to every clothing store in the area to find out that he had nothing like his jumpsuit in this city he was rather sad. So sad that he made a whimpering noise unconsciously. So he settled for buying clothing that applied to this word's fashion. He was lucky that the person who rented the penthouse left quite a large sum of money for him. He had no other choice, he had to delve into this world's fashion, and he did so with great trepidation. Luckily he had some girls here to give him an opinion. When they found out that he needed clothing, they seemed to sprint into one of the clothing stores with him in tow. Being able to choose clothes for a boy was very exciting to girls for some reason. After they were done, Naruto dropped the new clothing into his apartment, he decided it would probably be good to go back to the park to find out if there was anything he could use to try to contact his world, or even try to go back himself. He greatly doubted he could get back at all by himself, but it was nice to have hope. He investigated the park to find there was a chakra source around a certain area. Naruto couldn't do much with it at the moment, but figured if his chakra comes back he could see how sage mode would help his predicament. After a while, he felt decidedly worn out and chose to sit on the park bench, he needed to relax. Until he felt something dark. XXX Issei was having a great day. No great didn't even describe it, he was having an amazing day. After his beating at the hands of some vengeful girls a few days ago, his luck to turn around when this beautiful girl called Yuma confessed to him on a bridge. He didn't know how to react, this had never happened before. He ended up going on a date a few days after the confession, today. He could safely say that he had fallen in love with her. Now he found himself in this park right next to a fountain. The water's surface glistened with the bit of lighting through the park. Isei-kun. Yuma's delicate voice shot him out of his inner musings. H hi, Yuma-chan. He said nervously. Could you do something for me? Yuma asked, walking closer to Issei with her hair covering her eyes and a small blush on her cheeks. She stopped about a front in front of him. W what do you need? Was this where he lost his virginity? Oh by the gods he hoped so. Could you please die for me? She requested. All of Issei's thoughts that had slowly been turning more perverted by the second halted. E.H. He responded, confused. Scratching his cheek he continued. Could you? Repeat that again Yuma-chan? I think I heard you wrong, Issei said. Slowly, a dark smile spread across her face. I said, could you please die for me? She asked again, only this time it was with a chilling voice as her face twisted into something that looked alien compared to the innocence that was etched into her face before. Black angel wings spread from her back as her clothes morphed into some bondage clothing that covers very little of her body. Issei would have been drooling out the mouth if it wasn't for the fact that she was holding a very intimidating spear. Her last statement didn't help any as well. Sorry about this Issei-kun, it was a fun date. I will keep what you got for me as a personal treasure. I guess you were just unlucky. Yuma, said with a condescending look. After finishing her sentence she sent the spear sailing towards Issei. Issei froze as he saw his doom approaching. Unable to move because of panic, with a spear that was heading straight for his chest. He guessed it could have been a worse last day. Having a date with this beautiful girl. Expecting the object to kill him in about a second, he resigned himself to his fate, only to be tackled to the ground by another person. Looking up to his savior, he saw someone who he did not expect. That foreign student from school. Yet at the same time, it wasn't him. Before his eyes shined with a friendly glint and he had an almost infectious smile. The look on his face now was completely different to the guy he saw before. Right now he was staring at the girl Issei believed to be someone innocent, with cold, sharp eyes. This face was collect, calculated. His entire persona had made a full 180. Ah, young love, Naruto said nonchalantly, his voice betrayed by the sharp look in his eyes, it truly makes my heart flutter, he ended. Yuma, looked at the annoyance that just saved her target with disdain. It would have been so easy to kill the bug, but now she had to kill two bugs. You best leave Blondie, 
I don't want to waste any more time than I have to and right now you are standing between me and my kill. If you just walk away, then I will spare your pathetic life, she said with a scowl. Ma, ma. So rude. Perhaps I should fix that attitude of yours, Naruto said easily. Okay, he didn't know if he could actually fight her. He was severely weakened right now. He only really had enough chakra for his body to function, that was about it. He didn't know who, or what, this girl was, and didn't know how strong she was. Judging by the wings that were coming out of her back, she wasn't normal. He didn't know much about this world, but judging from this Issei kid's reaction, this type of thing isn't exactly a regular occurrence. He hadn't heard anything about people with wings and he hadn't seen anyone before her with them, so he would go on a limb and say that this very rarely would ever happen to people. He would think on it later, right now he had to protect this guy. You believe you could kill me? She taunted. After snorting she continued, I don't think you understand how low you are compared to me. I don't really care about that. I'm not the type of person who could just leave someone to die for my own safety. Naruto responded, looking slightly miffed at her holier than thou attitude. Petulant child. She called and summoned a spear of light, before she could throw it at either of them. Naruto sprinted at high speeds towards her. Not expecting that kind of speed from a human, she couldn't react in time when a fist made contact with her face, knocking her to the ground. Naruto capitalized on the dazed state she would no doubt be in and ran towards her only to be surprised when he saw that she was standing and looked absolutely livid. Materializing another spear because the other one was flung away after the blonde's strike, she sent it flying at the blonde. Naruto was only just able to evade it by jumping over the weapon. He continued towards her in an attempt to have engage in close combat. He was surprised again by the speed her strikes were sent. From what he had seen from this world, humans were unable to use their chakra, so they couldn't produce jutsu or enhance their speed, power or strength with chakra. He figured this out after gym class. He was able to dominate every other student in the sports that they played and he wasn't even using chakra. This led him to the conclusion that humans here were much weaker than in the elemental nations. Everyone here were basically civilians. In hindsight, he should have considered her abnormality would translate into her speed and power. Even though she was much faster than him at the moment, he was still able to keep up with her somewhat because of his technique and combat experience. It really paid off to be a trained ninja. The fallen angel was getting increasingly more annoyed with each strike, she was being bested by a human. That made her seethe in anger, she was obviously faster, but he was just so hard hit. Each one of his punches were a lot harder than she expected, and even though they didn't particularly hurt that much, there was enough of them that the pain was adding up. Naruto was winning at the moment, but he knew that he wouldn't last much longer, he could already feel his body tiring because of the speed that he was being forced to move damn this weakened state. It balanced out though, because even though his movements were becoming sluggish, her movements were becoming more straightforward and predictable due to her anger. Although she didn't look like she was going to run out of juice anytime soon. Naruto had to finish this quickly. She tried to punch for his face only for him to dodge yet again. This time he grabbed her arm in a lock and struck at her elbow, attempting to break it. The blow landed, but it did not buckle like he thought it would. Instead, she howled in anger and kicked him in the ribs. Naruto rocketed towards the tree that was behind him. He tried to stop himself by sticking to the ground, only to remember he had no chakra that he could use. So he ended up hitting the tree with a great amount of force. Writhing in pain under the tree, he realized that some of his ribs were broken. It was also getting increasingly difficult to breathe. Did one of his ribs puncture his lung? After he coughed up some blood, he realized that yes, one of his ribs had punctured his lung. He would have cursed but he found the task too difficult to accomplish. He tried pushing himself off the ground to get up, only to find something else that had pierced into him. Out of his chest protruded a spear. He looked at it in a daze. It didn't hurt, was he losing feeling in his body? Goddamn, if this wasn't the shittiest time of his life. Only a week in this place and he gets a spear through his in chest. His vision was slowly getting darker. As he looked over to the one responsible for his current state, he noticed that she looked very haughty over his inevitable demise. He didn't really care though, it was becoming a task to care about anything at this point. He felt so sleepy. Was this how he would die? Dying in a world he knew next to nothing about, with his friends no doubt mourning over his death? With that thought, he slowly managed to gain strength. His fingers twitched sporadically. No he wouldn't. He was Naruto Uzumaki. The one who fought against someone who people claimed to be a god, and won. The one who had saved everyone from a deluded man with a twisted dream. The one who faced down the Jubi without fear. 
he would not die such a death. He pushed himself off the ground, his muscles groaning in protest. He paid it no mind though, he had to save this perverted kid from his doom. He had to live today to see his friends again. He had to live, because he had an obligation to. After standing straight, he pulled the spear out of his chest. He felt the agony that the action brought him, and was forced down on one knee because of the pain. He panted, looking up into the wide, disbelieving eyes of the fallen angel as they stared into his own determined orbs. The fallen angel stared at his chest just in time to see it slowly close up. This boy, he could not be human. She looked back into his eyes and felt her breathing quicken. Staring back at her, were the eyes of such hatred she had to take a step back. No longer were they the brilliant, blue stratospheres that they were. Looking at her now were crimson red eyes. The pupils were slitted and had an animalistic look about them. The eyes glowed menacingly in the darkness. After the wounds had knitted themselves back together, his ribs snapping back into place with a noise that made her wince. The man pounced at her. The speed was inhuman. She glided into the air to gain some distance so she could conjure up a spear of light, but she found that he was in her space in a split second. He smashed his fist into her stomach, winding her, and sending her plummeting down to the earth. This time when he punched her, it hurt more, much more. So much in fact that she didn't know if she wanted to stand. The blonde animal did not deign her with the time to recover. He planted his fist in her face wish crushing force and threw her at the fountain. The stone of the fountain broke as she impacted it. Adrenaline kicked into her system as she tried flying away, she spread her wings and jumped. She then felt a sharp pain coming from her back as she tried to fly. She turned to find that the red-eyed boy was holding her jet black wings. The fact that the boy was able to hold her back from flying was frightening. She went into panic, screaming for her life and flapping as hard as she could. Her screams brought Naruto out of his trance. He looked to her face, seeing tears prickling at her eyes as she tried desperately to get out of his hold. The fact that he would have killed her in such a harsh way made him feel so guilty. Even if she was trying to kill an innocent, it was just too cruel. He decided he should scare her away instead of outright murdering her. He pulled her down and grabbed her throat. He let out an animalistic growl to stop her screams. If you try to murder this guy, or anyone from this city again, I will kill you. For now I shall let you go. Next time I will not be so lenient. Do I make myself clear? He asked in a cold voice. Truthfully, he was holding himself back from snapping her neck right now. What was wrong with him? Last time he was using Kyubi's chakra he did not have these urges. Seeing her nod rapidly with fear in her dark violet eyes, he let her go. After she was out of his iron grip she flew as fast as she could away, not looking back at her would be killer. Seeing her leave, he sighed. Shortly after she left his sight, he collapsed in the fountain. His muscles were not responding to his demands. He could barely move, and again he found his consciousness slipping away. This time he felt no power boost, he only felt weak. He looked up through the lens of water, watching as the outside world was distorting into different shapes and colors. He felt so at peace. All of his worries were melting away because of this water, the space felt like an ocean rather than a small fountain. He saw a figure staring down the fountain and looking at him, it was a girl. She looked like she was followed by a crimson cloud that went from her head down her back. He then realized that it was actually the person's hair. A hand suddenly pushed through the water to grab him. That was all he saw before his world turned black. Naruto awoke with a groan. Rolling over he decided that he would try to get some more rest in. Until he realized that he was alive. Sitting himself up, he surveyed the location he was in. It was his temporary room. He frowned. Pushing himself up from his spot, his hand landed on something soft. Something that was softer than the pillow he had been lying on. Giving the soft object an experimental squeeze earned him a moan. Naruto turned to find the red-haired girl who had been at school. She was lying on his bed stark naked. Contrary to popular belief, Naruto wasn't clueless about the opposite, or in general. He had a number of times in his travels with Jiraiya of the Senin. The old pervert convinced him to join him at the brothel during his second year traveling. He had regretfully gotten his chastity taken by one of the escorts whilst he was rather drunk. He didn't count that time though. He counted the first time he had successfully seduced a woman a few weeks after the visit to the brothel instead. Just because he had some experience with this sort of thing did not mean that he wouldn't get at least a little flustered when a very beautiful and very naked girl was lying right next to him with his hand currently resting on her left. Flustered didn't seem to be. With that thought, he headed to the kitchen to get some breakfast started. Getting out of his bed, he looked down at himself to find that he was also naked. 
perhaps he really did do something with this woman last night. Naruto moved to the closet to retrieve some shorts, he decided to forego the shirt for now. His chest felt somewhat irritated, he left out the door to the kitchen. XXX Rhea's nose twitched to the smell of something delectable. She sat up, straightening her back while stretching her arms. She let out a cute yawn while stretching. Deciding to see what the blonde was up to, she walked out of the room, the sheet dropping from her naked form. Revealing her in all of her glory. Rias entered the living room and got a good look at how the blonde was living. This was not within a high school boy's price range. His parents have to be loaded if this was where he was staying. Although, she couldn't exactly say anything, having a family that is one of the richest, if not the richest, families in the underworld. Stopping at the entrance of the kitchen, she saw the blonde that was occupying her thoughts. He was cooking come breakfast. Eggs, bacon, and pancakes with syrup. It looked delicious. Naruto turned to see Rias as naked as the day she was born. She looked up from the breakfast and smiled at him. Oheyo Uzumaki-kun, did you sleep well? Rias asked politely. Naruto was close to short-circuiting, he had no idea what was going on with him, he knew that her body would have an effect on him because of his hormones, but he was having a completely different feeling from what was normal. He wasn't embarrassed, it was more trying his best not to jump her. Kami, what was he thinking? I slept well. What about you Miz? Naruto probed. He would have thanked Aero Senen if he was still alive for teaching him how to hide his emotions and look calm on the outside. Ah, forgive me for my rude manners. I am Rias Grammary, and I slept very well thank you. She bowed. The motion causing her s to jiggle enticingly. Naruto was hard pressed not to let his eyes travel down Rias' voluptuous figure. Rias did not try as hard as Naruto in abstaining from letting her eyes travel. She looked at his shirtless body and was surprised by how much muscle was visible. His body was extremely defined, it was one of an Olympic athlete. His muscles were not bulky, but looked extremely dense, even though he was quite lean. She couldn't imagine how much he had trained to gain such figure. No, nah, it's fine, Naruto's voice brought her out of her stupor, I must admit that I am surprised though. I don't want to sound rude or anything, but I don't remember much of last night, Naruto said. I will explain to you at school. Rias said with a smile. Sure. Do you mind getting dressed then? School is starting soon. Naruto motioned to her form. Of course. Rias responded elegantly, not bothered at all by having her body seen. Naruto walked into his room to grab his uniform. He stepped on the uniform he was wearing last night, to found it covered in blood. A hole in the chest section. He sighed. So last night did happen. That complicated things. He thought that maybe it was just a very, very vivid dream. He guessed that there was no way the pain that he had to deal with was just a figment of his imagination, but the entire ordeal still could have been fabricated by his subconscious. Even though it was highly unlikely. He grabbed the extra uniform that was in the closet and put it on. After the clothes were in place, he sat on the bed in deep thought. He didn't have a clue on what transpired last night. After the woman with wings kicked him, all of his thoughts were blank. It was as if his mind was movie reel that had been snipped off at a certain section. He did remember how he felt though. It was a seething rage. Not really at anything in particular, just general hatred. In fact, he hadn't felt anything like it since, his eyes widened as he recalled the last time he had felt that much loathing. It was when he didn't have control over Karama's chakra. When he used the toxic chakra, it made him very aggressive when he did not know how to fully control it. Could he have perhaps used the Kyubi's chakra to beat the fallen angel? But then, why was the beast not answering his attempts at contact? He would try to call the biju out during class, right now he had to talk to the redhead that had just gotten out of the bathroom, now fully clothed. He felt relieved of his, urges, after seeing her when she wasn't naked. XXX. I would like to get to know you a bit better, Rias said with a smile, as her and Naruto made their way to the school. I think you are meant to say that before you jump into someone's bed naked. Naruto jibed with a grin. Hum. Maybe you're right. I will have to remember that. She responded playfully, looking thoughtful as she placed her index finger to her chin. Well, I'll tell you anyway. What do you want to know? Naruto asked while tilting his head slightly. I do have some things that I will ask you at lunch. Right now, I would like to get to know you personally, Rias said. All right then. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I am 17 years old. Favorite food is ramen, the food of the gods, and my favorite color is orange the color of the gods. Rias giggled at how enthusiastic he said his likes. I dislike arrogant people and how long it takes for ramen to cook. 
My hobbies are training and a little bit of gardening. My dream for the future is, he went into a thinking pose at that. She wouldn't know what a Hokage was, and he didn't want to be that crazy kid if she gossiped how he claimed to come from another world. He shook his head and continued, I'm still trying to figure that out. She seemed to be pleased with his answer because she continued walking in silence. You know, Naruto started, making Rias focus her attention on him again, I wouldn't mind getting to know you better as well Rias Chan. Naruto finished with a smile. Rias was rather surprised at how fast he started calling her by her by her first name, especially with the Chan suffix. Many males and even women found her beauty intimidating, making them cautious. This was a surprising development. Rias quickly recovered and responded. Then what would you like to know about me, Naruto kun? She emulated how his head tilted, the only difference was she had a smile as she asked the question. Likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams. You know, like how I did, he said. Okay. I like drinking tea in Japanese culture. I dislike people who are of noble status and believe that because of that they have the right to degrade everyone who is not of said status. My hobbies are listening to music and. She paused when she was about to say her secret status as an otaku. She didn't know how he would react. Plus, she was rather secretive about her status. Um, my dream is to be the best head of the Gremory family in history, she finished. Head of your family? Are you a noble person or something? Naruto blinked. After seeing her nod, he let out a guffaw. Wow, you have to be one of the only rich people I know who isn't totally up themselves. He said, gaining a new respect for the redhead. She smiled at the compliment, even though it was said in a rather crass way. Thank you. Isn't your family rich as well? The place that you are staying is a lot more than you need, she said. Ah, actually, I don't have any family, I've been an orphan my entire life. Naruto said with a sad smile. Rias felt awful. She wanted to prod about how he was living in such a nice location but didn't want to bring up any more unpleasant memories for the blonde. I'm sorry for speaking without thinking, she apologized. Nah, don't worry about it. You didn't know so of course I'm not going to hold it against you. Naruto said. His face then adopted a devilish smile. I don't think I could hold it against someone as beautiful as you. He said. He then blinked and realized what he had just said. Rias was again surprised by the blonde. He was rather direct, and his entire manner of speech changed. It was more seductive. It was like he changed into a completely different person for just a few seconds. Naruto meanwhile, was trying to figure out what the hell managed to make him say that. He knew that he could be seductive if he truly wanted, but he didn't do it without even thinking. He didn't apologize though, that would just make this entire thing more awkward. T thank you. Rias said, looking rather flustered. She had received compliments before, every day at school, almost all of the students she walked past complimented her amongst their friend groups. However, he said it so directly, and with such an alluring voice that even she was not immune to it. Naruto hid his look of astonishment. He made the girl so flustered and he didn't even know why he said that out of nowhere. He looked relieved at the sight of the school gates for the very first time since he was in this city. He made a quick exit. I'll see you at lunch Rias Chan. Naruto gave her a quick grin, then shot off to class. She blinked at how fast he was gone. XXX Naruto opened and closed his hand while looking down at it, lost in thought. When he shot off towards class, he didn't actually think he would, well, shoot off like that. He ended up almost hitting the wall when he went off at the amazing speed he displayed. He was able to stop at the last second, but it didn't escape the notice of the students. The people around the front of the school looked dumbstruck. He just chuckled nervously and rubbed the back of his head. No doubt there were already rumors going around. He currently sat at his desk with a couple of the people in class looking at him with wide eyes, like if they looked away then he would disappear, he sighed. When class started he began to tune out, he decided that he should figure out what was going on with his body. He did not use chakra to speed himself up, that much he could be sure of, but if he didn't, then what made him go at such a speed? He decided to check where his reserves were. When he looked at where his chakra was at throughout the week, it had stayed as an infinitesimally small amount compared to the copious level his chakra was at before. Right now it had made a huge leap. It still wasn't where it was at when he had fought Madara, but it was still satisfying to find out that his reserves were being replenished. That brought more questions though. Why did he suddenly have a huge spike in his chakra? If he actually did use Kyubi's chakra then it would make sense that his chakra would change in some way. He figured it would be good to try contacting the biju again. Closing his eyes, he focused on shutting everything out. 
XXX Naruto opened his eyes when he felt the familiar dampness at the soles of his feet. He looked around to find himself in an expanse of pure darkness. This was the first time he was able to enter his mindscape since he had come to this world, the closest he had ever come to talking to the fox again. He could tell he was in his mindscape only because of the feeling of moisture at his feet, it was much, much darker than it had been the last time he had entered it. He continued looking around, and found a fur of red that glowed amongst the black void he was in. Kurama, I is that you? Naruto said, feeling his breath hitch when there was no answer for several seconds. Ichi couldn't be dead, why was he motionless then? Naruto started to panic as his thoughts slowly turned darker, until he could hear muffled chuckles that was slowly escalating into full-blown, booming laughter. Kayubi you asshole, Naruto roared, his narrowed eyes conveying his anger towards the nine-tailed fox that was currently rolling around while holding its sides. Naruto's angry comment only seemed to amuse the beast more. Ha ha ha, I'm sorry kid, I just couldn't help myself, Kayubi said between chuckles and snorts of laughter. Naruto crossed his arms while pouting, looking like a kid who was about to throw a tantrum. Until his eyes lit up and he let out a blinding smile that lit up the dark, gritty expanse he and the fox were in. You have no idea how good it is to see you Kurama, Naruto said seemingly unbothered by the laughs the Kayubi was still letting out. It good to see you too Kit, I've been trying to contact you for quite a while now. Kayubi said, revealing his huge, red eyes, it took you long enough to actually come here. Naruto was about to explain exactly why he couldn't when Kayubi suddenly said, I understand why you couldn't, that trans-dimensional leap that you made seemed to mess you up some. Your chakra coils were damaged quite a lot, almost shredded to bits in fact. You're lucky that you had me. I had to put my healing capabilities into overdrive while you were being transported by Hitaki's Kamui. Are you serious? Is that why my chakra is nowhere near where it was before coming here? Naruto asked loudly. Partly. Kayubi began slowly, another part of the reason was also due to our connection being fractured. While we were in the dimensional rift, our two chakras were being broken down into two separate entities, we were going to be separated from each other. If I let that happen then you would have died, he said gravely. Whoa, uh thanks. Naruto said, blinking at how close his death had been. Thank Kami for the nine tails. There's more, Kayubi said, bringing Naruto's attention onto the giant before him. I was not able to fix the connection lost between us fully, which is why I could not answer your calls or summons. But since you were able to pull out a minute amount of my chakra, I was able to slowly fix it up partially more, so we are able to communicate. I shall fix it to what it was when we were fighting that fool Madara, however, it will take some time. Kayubi finished. Naruto nodded slowly, taking in all of the information. He processed it, and then asked the question that had been plaguing his mind since he had got here. Is Madara in this world? Naruto asked with a clipped tone. I am, unsure. Said Kayubi, making Naruto slump. It is a possibility that he made it here, it is also a possibility that he was flung into another dimension entirely. Whatever the case, I don't know if the Uchiha was killed. Hashirama's cells have an amazing healing speed, they rival mine, and there are less side effects, so I doubt it was killed. Kayubi admitted grudgingly. Naruto let out a sigh. He thought that he would be alive, the bastard was hard to kill. Naruto decided to ask his next question. Will my chakra go back to its regular size? I've noticed that my chakra has made a huge jump, but it is still nowhere near what it once was. Naruto said, sounding hopeful. In time I think that it will. It wasn't only me who helped the chakra go up to the level that it is now. That red-haired girl, she is definitely not normal. She was somehow able to contribute to replenishing your chakra stores. Your body has also seemed to make some changes, how much I cannot be sure. Said the Kayubi, lying its massive head onto its paws while staring at him in an apathetic gaze. I knew something had to happen to my body, it was pretty obvious after I ran at the pace that I did this rejected it very harshly because of how separate our connection is. After you used even that minuscule amount you basically doomed yourself. Your body was shutting down because of the density of my yuki. The girl with red hair is the only reason you are alive right now. Kayubi said. Naruto opened his mouth to ask how but Kayubi stopped him. Before you ask, I don't know how she did it. She will tell you, probably. Naruto nodded, signaling for Kurama to speak again. Anyway, the reason for your bloodthirst was due to our dislodged connection. When you used my chakra after the war, you were able to stave off my hate because of you claiming some of chakra for your own after our, well, tug of war game. 
Later you were able to use all of my chakra because of the synchronicity we shared. Without that, you reverted back to what you used to be like while using my chakra. Along with that, it seems to have affected you by making you have more animalistic characteristics, even when you are not using said chakra. For now I only have theories as to why that is. I believe that the girl also contributed to that in some way as well. Kayubi finished. Naruto opened his mouth and closed it a few times, trying to think on what that actually meant for him. After a few additional seconds he finally gathered his thoughts. So, I am going to start looking like a werewolf or something? Naruto asked with a scared tone. Causing Kayubi to burst out laughing. Hey, serious question here, what do you mean by, animalistic characteristics? That sounds which sounds way too ominous. Naruto yelled over Kayubi's howls. Kid, it really is good to see you. Kayubi said, wiping a stray tear away with his paw. You are the only one who could make me laugh this much. Oi, this is serious, screamed Naruto, harumphing. No kid, you are not going to turn into a werewolf or look like one. However, you will display a small number of features. The only physical change is that your eyes might morph into mine with a little less anger on your part, and you won't have to be completely livid to go into the more aggressive state while using my chakra. Kurama ticked off with his fingers. There are also some psychological changes. For example, you will be more territorial, and will exhibit, some natural needs in a more pronounced way. Kayubi said. Kurama, what are you saying? Asked Naruto with narrowed eyes. I trust you remember the feeling you had when you saw the girl naked this morning. You have more obvious baser instincts, making you, crave more of the pleasure of the flesh. Kayubi said, a smirk forming on his face. You're saying I'm going to be a pervert? Asked Naruto, eyes widening in horror. Ha ha ha, no not really kid. You won't be any more perverted per se, you will just want a member of the opposite to carry your genes. Like an instinct. Kayubi said, trying to cover his giggles. This is not funny, Naruto said, flailing his arms animatedly. As for me kid, Kayubi said with a grin, but don't be too worried, these feelings are basically due to my influence. Kind of. I will be able to calm it down a bit, so you won't have bloodlust 24-7, and you won't have an overwhelming need to have, only more than the average human, again like an instinct. So what you're saying is you're the pervert? Naruto said with narrowed eyes and point at him accusingly. Not at all. Kayubi said indignantly, looking like he was legitimately insulted by Naruto's accusation. Being perverted and having needs are two completely different things. Kayubi lectured. Sure, pervert. Naruto rolled his eyes. Why, you ungrateful little, Kayubi started, and then straightened. It seems that your class is over. The girl promised some answers and I wish to find out if my theories were correct. We will talk after she is done talking to you, be on your feet, the Nine Tails said. Naruto nodded. Closing his eyes he left his mindscape, his form fading into the darkness that was cloying to the proverbial walls. XXX Naruto shifted into the physical world just in time to find the school Bishonen looking at him with a friendly smile. Yudo Kiba. This guy seemed to radiate princely charm. Almost every girl in the school would probably be willing to jump him if they had duct tape in hand and were in a dark corner where he couldn't escape. The guy kind of reminded Naruto of Sasuke, what with the popularity and all. Only difference being that Kiba was polite, rather than the whole angst teen thing that Sasuke had going on. Hello Uzumaki-kun. Do you mind coming with me to Bucko? Kiba asked in a kind tone of voice. Naruto figured that, Bucko, was Rias. She must have sent for him through Yuto. Perhaps they are in a club of some sort. He shook his thoughts out. Sure. Returning Kiba's polite tone of voice with a nonchalant shrug, he stood up and walked through the classroom to the exit. XXX. So this bucko of yours, am I correct when I say that she is Rias Chan? Asked Naruto, his head leaned up to look at the clouds above them. Yes, she is the president of the occult research club said Yuto. Hmm, I have heard of that club before. I myself find the ideas of devils and other beings of the like fascinating. Naruto said. He really was quite intrigued by the idea of there being an underworld and other such things. Granted, this fascination was partially due to having a demon in his belly. The recent run-in with the fallen angel only solidified his interest in the subject. Walking along in silence, the duo reached an old-looking building after only a minute. The two blondes stepped through the door, into the building. As Naruto observed the inside of the building, he noticed that it was much cleaner than it was on the outside. Where the outside had slightly tattered walls, the inside was impeccable. 
Obviously the age wouldn't bother the inhabitants of the building, the inside looked brand new. The two blondes came across another door. Kiba knocked lightly on the door a couple of times. Upon hearing, enter, on the other side of the portal, they promptly did as instructed. Naruto was not surprised to see Rias sitting at the table looking towards them. Rias smiled. He was surprised by the other female however. The woman next to Rias was stunning. She had raven black hair that was done in a ponytail with an orange. Her hair was long enough to go down to her feet. Her bust size may have even been bigger than Rias. Her milky skin looked just as smooth as the redheads and her smile seemed a lot more seductive than the graceful smile of the Grammaries. Her violet eyes gleamed with mischievousness which was reminiscent of the snake chick at the Chunin exams. Hello there. Please take a seat Naruto-kun, Rias said. Naruto could have mistook her tone for Serutobi's if she was an old man with liver spots and wrinkles, with a grandfatherly voice. She was the exact opposite though. Yeah, sure. Naruto turned to the chair where the other inhabitant was sitting. He froze. Oh no, it was happening again. He realized what the cause was. The petite girl with white hair, who was looking at him with big, beautiful amber eyes. She had rather pale skin, a cute looking face, and a hair clip in the shape of a black cat. Her silver hair framed her face, with two bangs going past her chin. She was obviously an underclassman because of her stature. Her face was set in a blank stare. He was having the same sort of problem he had with the redhead this morning. The difference being that the girl in front of him was clothed. Naruto was in control when he looked at Rias when she was clothed at least. The girl that was eating cake in front of him right now seemed to radiate this energy that was so damn alluring. Was this the animal instincts kicking in? He realized with a start that he had been in the same place a few seconds longer than he should have been and moved next to the cat-like girl and sat down. He controlled his lust for now. Damn that perverted Kayubi. I apologize for summoning you here in such haste, said Rias. Her face soon adopted a very serious expression as she said her next statement. But I could not risk the chance for anyone who might listen in on the conversation that will ensue. You pulled quite a stunt, beating a fallen angel by yourself. She said slowly. What was that demonic magic that you pulled during the fight? She asked seriously. Naruto stiffened. She was able to distinguish his chakra as being demonic, meaning that she likely had experience in similar things. I went to the location where I could feel a demonic signature, I did not expect you to be there, she commented. What was Naruto to do? He seemed to be cornered, he could lie his way through this but he doubted that he could slip his way out of this one. If she knew that the chakra he leaked was demonic then there was almost no way he could get through this by lying. He took a deep breath and looked towards her. What makes you think that what you felt was that of a demonic nature, do you have experience in these things? Naruto started, wanting to take this down another road, he didn't exactly want to be some sort of guinea pig in a lab if these guys learned that he was from another dimension. He could easily prove that he was not from this world via Bunshin or any other jutsu, but that would lead him to getting experimented on for perhaps the rest of his life. He did not want that. That is to be expected. You see, we are all devils, she said lightly. Naruto blinked once, twice, thrice, before deciding to grace the room with a sophisticated response. Huh? Naruto asked, his head leaning in as if that would answer his question. He was startled back when wings shot out from Rias back, prompting the others in the room to display their bat like wings boisterously. Judging by your reaction, you did not expect this, the president of the club said. Well I don't really expect people to just pop wings out of their backs and claim that they are devils every day. Naruto said dryly, after regaining his composure. I understand. I will elaborate for your sake then. We are not humans, we are beings that come from the underworld, or hell as people call it. We have powers that regular homo sapiens do not, and possess traits that are different that humans also lack, she said, gesturing to the wings on her back. Okay, not the weirdest thing that I've ever heard I guess, Naruto replied, startling all the occupants in the room, sans Rias. Somehow I knew that you would have that kind of reaction, said Rias, after all, you are not of this world either, she stated. Naruto straightened his back slightly, and why would you think that, he asked. After your fight with the fallen angel known as Rainer, I came because of the energy that was emitted. It was a very malevolent energy that you put out. Going to the signature I found you standing in a fountain, knee deep in water with Rainer flying away erratically and then you collapsed into the water. The power that was in the area was definitely not of a fallen angel's, nor one of a devil's. It was definitely not of this world. The busty redhead stated simply. 
Naruto was slightly on edge. The last encounter with someone with wings didn't exactly end well for him, he didn't want to repeat the same mistake. His muscles were slightly tense to make sure that he could make a quick retreat if need be. He highly doubted that he could fight everyone in the room, even if he did have significantly more chakra than he had while versing Rainer. He let out a slightly relieved breath when everyone's wings retracted into their backs, blocked from view. If Rius was willing to reveal herself and her companion's identity as devils, then he supposed he could cross out the possibility of them turning him into a lab of some sort, but he was still wary. He would see where this would go however, he needed the information. If I said that I was from another world, what would you do with the information? Naruto asked tightly. I would have to see what your abilities are and take you to someone so they could examine you, she said. Naruto let a concealed kanai slip through his blazer sleeve into his hand at her statement. The kanai itself was made by him, he had three in his arsenal. Three was all he could forge in the time he was in this world. He did not want to kill anyone here, gods above he did not want to kill anyone, he had seen what killing does, and it is never a good outcome. He would avoid killing unless absolutely necessary, he was just using the weapon as a cautionary step. You would take me to be tested on? His eyes darkened at his own words. Rius noticed the coldness in his voice, so she quickly explained to him what she meant. You will not be tested on in an experimental way. You were able to beat a fallen angel without using any magic. You did use some sword energy though, and that is what they would like to test. She said in a calming voice, her gaze slightly softened. And who might, they, be? Naruto asked. My brother will be the one who would like to meet you. If he finds anything interesting in you then he may introduce you to the life of a devil. Prove you are not a threat and my family shall welcome you, she said. Why would I want to become a devil? No offense but I am not sure I would be interested in becoming a being that is portrayed as sinister in almost book, movie, TV show and pretty much every source of media. Naruto said, ticking off everything with his fingers. He used the hand that didn't have a weapon being held in it. There are many benefits. Powers, increased strength, agility, the ability to fly, longevity. Need I go on? She asked rhetorically. Though, I am unsure on what abilities you possess as of right now. Sorry, but I must decline. I have only known you for a day, so forgive me for not putting a whole lot of trust in you. Naruto spoke, standing up and attempting to leave. I will not allow you to leave. You may prove to be a threat, and if so, then you will regretfully be terminated. Rias said harshly, trying to convey the gravity of this situation. Naruto conducted some wind chakra in the blade that was occupying his right hand. Since his head was turned to Rias, he did not see how Kaneko's eyes widened slightly at the feeling of chakra. No one else seemed to notice the chakra. I also cannot allow you to leave because you are linked to me in a sense. Rias started, making Naruto's eyes turn curious, however it did not interfere with the sharpness his orbs held at the, cannot allow you to leave, statement. I saved you from death by implementing into you some of my magic and heal you by lathering yourself through magic via skin contact. Naruto's eyes widened in understanding, realizing why he had healed from last night. Her claim was plausible, kind of. He didn't know the components of magic or its uses, but he figured it was the same sort of healing as the Kyubis. We devils use something called the chess piece system, where we are able to reincarnate humans into devils. I used every piece I she said firmly. This is a huge inconvenience for you, I know. But you could be a threat. Naruto didn't like this. He most likely couldn't defeat these people, he wasn't even sure he could flee without being caught. He would probably stand a chance if he used the Kyubis chakra but that would probably end up in the same result as it had last night, only this time Rias would not heal him. He would have had the art of surprise if it wasn't for the fact that everyone was obviously wary of him right now. He had little choice in the matter of going with her. He hoped what he was about to do wasn't a mistake. All right, I'll go with you, Naruto said with a sigh and slump of the shoulders. He slid the kanai back up his sleeve stealthily. He could not risk them seeing the kanai and deeming him a threat. Rias nodded. She formed a pentagram on the ground that bathed the room with a crimson light. She then stepped over to it, along with her servants. His face set in trepidation as he did so as well. Shortly after stepping onto it there was a flash of red. Naruto stared at the ceiling as he lay on the bed, his arms splayed out to his sides and his legs off the end of the bed, thinking on what had transpired. He was in the underworld right now, threatened into coming here. He was residing in a castle that belonged to the Gremory family, Rias family. It had been a few hours since he came here, and not a lot had happened honestly, he had met no one in the underworld save for the maids and servants that appeared to be chronically busy. 
Ria's parents were going to be out for a few days. They had an important thing to go to apparently, not that he really cared for the reason of them not being here. Her brother was also not going to be here for tonight, tomorrow was when he had to meet the redhead's brother. He was actually kind of nervous. He generally sucked when it came to conversing with nobles, he always gave people derogatory terms, even his superiors. Hell, he called both of the Hokages that he worked under their own nicknames, Old Man, and Granny, respectively. He respected them both greatly, but he just didn't show it through all of the polite etiquette crap. He never believed that one person is better than another just because they were born into rich families, or given opportunities that others are not given, but he definitely did not want to appear too rude. He was living in their home for the time being, they could have just thrown him in a prison or something. Instead he got a very nice room where he could sleep in relative peace. The fact that he was at their mercy didn't help matters either, he didn't want to die before he saw all of his friends again. There were also other things that his mind was straying towards. He had to get training, he had to get his chakra back to the level that it was. There was no other way to get back to the elemental nations. If he wanted to make another dimensional jump, then he had to be able to survive again, and it seemed that in order to do that, he couldn't have the puny reserves, compared to what he had previously, anyway. He didn't understand the mechanics of it, but Karama did touch on the subject, he would need the Kyubi's help to gain his reserves, along with finding a way to make a dimensional leap. Naruto wasn't exactly confident about them being able to find a way through Fuinjutsu. The blonde knew a little of the art, having a Fuinjutsu master for a sensei, godfather and all, but that was it. Even the fourth Hokage, who was said to be the greatest master of Fuinjutsu that the world had ever seen, would find a real challenge in transporting through dimensions. So Naruto trying to accomplish the same thing, with accuracy in dimension jumping as well as that, was laughable. The only real way he could think to go back was to get in contact with his sensei, and he didn't know how he would do that. He would confide with the fox, but he could barely talk to the furry bastard. The beast was simply too busy trying to patch up everything that was wrong with Naruto right now. Naruto didn't want to prolong his weakness, so he decided that he should just let Kurama do his thing. Still, that didn't mean that he would stop his training. With the little amount of chakra that he had at the moment, he would have to make the most of chakra control exercises if he didn't want to run out of steam after just a few jutsu. His control hadn't been great throughout his life because his level of chakra had been ridiculous. He could toss around high level jutsu for a large amount of time, overpowering the enemies he had to face. Now that he didn't have that much chakra, he had to be able to do more jutsu with less chakra. He only knew a few chakra control exercises, but he had the absolute boon on his side. A jutsu that had helped him through thick and thin. Cage Bunshin. Thank God for Kakashi Sensei, or curse him for showing him one of the most useful things the jutsu could do so late. Being able to make copies that you gain the knowledge of after they disperse was oh so helpful, it really was the ultimate training tool. Now that he had enough chakra to actually create a few, he would use that training method to its full potential. He doubted he could make a huge number, four or five at the most, after all, it was a very taxing technique chakra wise, but his chakra was filling up again. Still, he felt so helpless in his situation. Okay, so he wasn't completely useless right now, but he was definitely not where he would like to be. Going against the fallen angel was quite humbling when he didn't have his chakra to lean on, he was just a human with acute reflexes who was adept in hand to hand combat. If the fallen angel were just a regular human, then he would have absolutely destroyed her in combat, but she wasn't, and the people outside of this room weren't either. He needed to get his strength back, he was going to. Right now, Naruto was quite limited in what he could do. If he used the fox's chakra then he would die, and a lot of the jutsu that he knew were very chakra intensive. He had yet to try sage mode, he wasn't sure that it would be safe with the chakra he had at the moment, and due to the heaviness in the air in Kuo. The city had very little natural chakra that he could call on. The density of the air in the city almost clung to his skin, as if all of the natural energy in the area had been eradicated. The underworld had quite a bit more natural energy that he could feel, which was ironic really. He thought that the underworld was supposed to be devoid of life. He would try to call on his senjutsu energy while he was here, though now was not the time. He had no idea what the Gramary family wanted of him. Rius had said that they were to determine if he was a threat to transdimensional security. He did not even know that those words could be used in a sentence. Still, there was likely something else underlying in what they determined to do. He did not want to draw conclusions before meeting with Rhea's brother however. Judging by how the beauty and her servants reacted, someone jumping between dimensions was definitely not a daily occurrence. 
Still, they didn't take him coming here from another plane of existence too far-fetched. Since he had been transported through the human dimension by Rias, they were likely familiar with it, but they seemed to make a big deal out of him coming from a different one. Perhaps it was because they did not know who he was or which dimension that he came from. Although, they might just want to find a way to replicate how he was able to break the laws of physics in his own way. See the benefits to said way, and then kill him when his use had been fulfilled. He sighed. All of this thinking was starting to give him a headache. He would meditate on the situation later. Right now, he just wanted to get some much needed rest. So, moving up the bed, he rested his head on the pillow and closed his eyes. Falling into a blissful sleep within a minute. XXX. He's the one now? Naruto asked, blinking dumbly. He was currently sitting with Rias Grammary and her peerage. They were in the lounge room of the castle that she apparently lived in when she wasn't in the human world. The room consisted of a large chandelier that hung from the ceiling, quite a few comfy, expensive looking couches, and some paintings that looked as if it was painted by one of the great Renaissance artists. Rias and Akano were both sitting on a leather couch across from the whiskered blonde. Both were drinking their tea with an elegance that merited the name, the two great ladies of Kuo, to Naruto's right sat Yudo. Last was Kaneko, who was sitting at the end of the furniture that both blones sat on. She was snacking on some chocolate, which for some reason just made her seem more adorable. I said that he is the lord of the underworld, don't worry, he isn't scary, he is actually kind of an idiot, Rias said, sipping her tea. Naruto blinked again at how she described the top dog of the realm of devils. Okay. So your brother is the leader of the underworld, Lucifer. I am supposed to talk with him and convince him that I'm not a threat to any of the people in this dimension. At her nod he groaned, just my luck. Don't worry, he is very friendly, Rias stated as she covered her mouth to hide her giggle at Naruto's expense. He sent her an annoyed glare at her apparent amusement but she ignored it, our family is said to be one of the most benevolent in the underworld. He will listen to reason. Just relax, she stated matter of factly. Naruto leaned back in his chair and let out a huff. He was meant to meet Rias' brother in a few minutes. He was ready to talk to someone of importance, but not the lord of the freaking underworld. You could have told me this beforehand, I would have actually been able to prepare for a meeting like this. You can't say that I should relax when you want me to talk to Satan himself. Naruto grumbled, crossing his arms. If he pouted he would look like a child not getting what he wanted. Fufufufu, such a cute kahai we have. Can we keep him bucko? Akano seemed to want to get in on the conversation. She leered at Naruto while speaking. Naruto was hard pressed not to get too hormonal about the stunning girl. Maybe we can. If Naruto kun is found innocent, that is, said Rias, looking thoughtful. I'm not some kind of pet that you can decide to keep or not. Naruto ground out, growling slightly. Era era, are you sure that you wouldn't want to be my pet foxy kun? She breathed. Naruto almost choked on his own breath. This woman was way too seductive. Then he pondered his new nickname. Foxy Kun. Naruto tasted the name. I've never had that nickname before. I'll be your first then. How exciting. She seemed to be a bit too excited at being the first to call him that as she held a hand to her blushing cheek. Naruto decided to try and ignore the girl as best he could. Wouldn't do too well to let his mind wander before meeting the Lord of the Underworld. He didn't exactly want to get thrown in a pit of lava boiling for eternity or whatever everyone thought happened in the underworld if you pissed off their leader. The noise of the doors opening brought his attention to the figure that walked into the room. It was a man who was rather tall with shoulder length, red hair. The color was very, very similar to Rias Locks, the only difference being the slightly darker shade. Two flowing bangs framed his face and ended at his chest. His hair was not the only similarity that Rias Ahim shared, his eyes were also similar, if a lighter shade of green. In fact they were bordering on silver because of how light they were. He was wearing a very flashy set of armor, which made him appear much more broad-shouldered and all the more imposing. If the similarities between the man and Rias didn't alert Naruto as to who this was, the way that everyone bowed in respect of the man did. Naruto stood from his spot and turned to fully face the man. The imposing figure stood in front of him and looked him up and down. After his evaluation, the man put on a laid-back smile. You must be Naruto-kun, Sirzex asked, though it wasn't really a question. At Naruto's nod he continued, Rias Tan has told me all about you. The man stated jovially, sounding almost proud of his connection with Rias. Said girl looked rather embarrassed but stayed silent. Naruto didn't know how to respond to that. He settled with not asking why the, Crimson Satan, called his younger sister that. 
It is an honor to meet you Sirzex sama Naruto said with a bow. The red-haired man waved it off. No need to be so formal. Naruto was very thankful for the man's laid-back personality, he really wasn't one for formalities either. It is very nice to meet someone from an unknown place, though you don't seem all that different from a regular person. You may not know this, but what you have done was thought to be impossible. The man said. Wait, but you guys are able to travel through dimensions aren't you? Naruto asked. Yes, we are able to. However there are a few differences that make what you did very significant. The man said. You see, we are only really able to travel through a small number of dimensions. The underworld, the human realm, and heaven to name a few. Sirzex told Naruto. There is one place that we can't go to though, and that is the dimensional gap. No being is meant to travel through this place, as nothing but Great Red itself is meant to exist there. The fact that you were able to travel through the dimensional gap without getting ripped to shreds is, unsettling, to say the least. The red-haired man stated, looking serious for the first time in their conversation. What is Great Red? asked Naruto. He was curious about it, but the question was also meant to grant him time to think about the answers to some of the questions that he expected to hear. Great Red is a being with unimaginable power. He is the most powerful dragon in existence, and resides within the dimensional gap which you passed through to get to the human realm. I want to know how you were able to pass through the dimensional gap without dying. The redhead said. He obviously wanted to get back to the topic of Naruto not dying, he seemed quite adamant about it. Naruto had to think about this. He didn't have a reason to distrust these people. Naruto couldn't detect a single lie coming from the Satan in front of him. Though, he didn't want to tell these people the whole story, which would not only take an absurd amount of time, but was also kind of personal information that Naruto didn't want to just give out to people he had just met. He decided that he would tell them the truth of how he got here and some of where he was from, but wouldn't go into a great deal of description. Well, I am from a different dimension as you say. I am from a place called the Elemental Nations. I was sent here because I was saving my friends from someone. The only real way to beat the dude was to send him somewhere where he couldn't come back. So I sacrificed myself by holding him down long enough to have my sensei send us both away from our world. Naruto finished, and mentally patted himself on the back for not giving his entire life story away. He knew it would be short-lived though as he barely told them any information on the ability that was used to send him here or how he survived in the first place. He withheld a sigh at the thought. When he heard sniffling, he turned his head to the source, to find Sirzex actually tearing up slightly at the blonde's story. Verbally. Naruto did not hold a sigh in this time. Before he could speak however, Sirzex interrupted. Rias Tan, can't you see that Naruto-kun has been through enough already? he shouldn't have to answer questions that will evoke bad memories for him right now. The older man then grabbed Naruto in a bear hug, crushing the poor boy. The red-headed man didn't even notice the blonde's attempts at escape, too busy as he was glaring at his younger sister. Nisama, please let Naruto-kun go before you crush him. Rias said, looking worried for the teen. Her request had the desired effect. Sirzex seemed to notice Naruto's struggles and quickly let him go. Naruto gulped the air greedily after being released. That guy had a serious grip. The blonde turned to the man to see him flailing his arms about and sputtering apologies. He then turned back to the beauty, ignoring the man for the moment. Thanks Rias Chan. He panted, his complexion going back to normal. Yeah, well the way I came here was by a technique called Kamui. The ability comes from something called the Sharingan, which is some weird trait that this clan has. The clan is called the Uchiha. The Sharingan is actually an eye ability. Kamui has the ability to send objects or people through dimensions. My sensei had this ability, so I convinced him to send me and the enemy we were facing away, far from the elemental nations. Naruto explained. I have never heard of an eye ability, how does it work? Rias asked, looking extremely intrigued. I don't really know how eye abilities work, they are called dujutsu. Rias looked disappointed that she could not find out the information she wanted. She had always been one for learning all she could about a certain subject. The Sharingan is one of the three main dujutsu, said to be the second most powerful of all dujutsu. Naruto finished his explanation. He didn't want to go into all the applications and abilities of the Sharingan, the Byakugan and the Rinnegan, so he held his tongue about them. That still doesn't explain how you were able to travel into the human world. 
Even if the ability that you speak of is able to transport objects through dimensions, you still had to come through the dimensional gap to get there. There is no way that you were able to come out of the gap unscathed. Rias deduced. Naruto didn't want to inform everyone in the room about his current weakness, i.e. the low chakra reserves, but he probably couldn't get the conversation over with without at least touching on the subject. I didn't come out of it unscathed. When I entered the human world, I was weakened. My current level of ability isn't up to par with what I had before I got here. Naruto informed. What do you mean by level of ability? Kiba asked. I was getting to that. Naruto grumbled. I am not a regular human. Where I come from, it isn't uncommon to exhibit unnatural abilities. Understatement of the year. There were so many ninjas in the elemental nations that it was the majority of the population. At least, it seemed like it. What kind of abilities? Rias asked. Ugh. Way too many questions Naruto thought to himself. It seemed that they weren't going to let up on the questioning either. It wouldn't be detrimental if they knew of some of the powers that Naruto possessed, not if they didn't know his abilities specifically anyway. My world is basically a world of ninja. Naruto told everyone in the room. At everyone's deadpan, he decided to continue, I'm one of these ninjas. I'm not that great at the theory stuff, but I'll try to describe some theory to you anyways. The ninjas in my world have control over the elements and some other abilities. We control these powers by converting this stuff called chakra into energy that we can use to control water, fire, earth, wind, or lightning. Or something like that. Naruto finished, scratching his head sheepishly at his poor explanation. Your kind is able to control chakra. Akino asked. None of the playfulness that was in her tone before was present. The group looked over to Kaneko, who looked slightly wary of Naruto. Naruto noticed her wariness but didn't comment. Yeah, again, not good at the theory stuff. So don't expect a grand explanation about how all that stuff works. Naruto said. He turned to see Sirzex, who was studying him with a critical eye. It was plain to see he was thinking. And the demonic energy. Where did that come from? Naruto almost grimaced at Rias questions. The blonde didn't know what these people would do with Kurama if they found out about him. The fox was crazy powerful so they would probably see how they could use him to their advantage. Not exactly everyone in the room specifically, but the general devil population. The Grimori family really did seem as benevolent as Rias said, judging from the two that he had met anyway, but he doubted every devil was like that. A portion of my chakra is demonic in nature. It wasn't exactly a lie, his statement did hold some truth in it. The fox's chakra kind of was Naruto's chakra in a way. When I whipped that chakra out, I didn't realize that my body would have such a negative reaction in my weakened state. Hence the reason I collapsed after beating the fallen angel chick. Naruto replied easily. I survived the trip here for a number of reasons, but the main one is my healing factor. The demonic chakra that I have inside my body gives me a huge boost in healing speed. He wouldn't explain all of the reasons. In the words of a wise, lazy genius, it was too troublesome. When Rias opened her mouth, Sirzex put his hand up to silence his sister. She closed her mouth dutifully, seeing the serious look he had on his face. Naruto saw that Sirzex was skeptical about believing Naruto fully. No doubt he noticed the few gaps that Naruto left in his explanation. Sirzex's face then expectantly broke out into a smile. I've got all the information I need for now. Naruto, Sirzex addressed the blonde, I don't think that you are a threat. That is just my belief though. As one of the leaders of the underworld I have to discuss things further with the other Satans. For now you will be under the supervision of Rias Tan. The man said enthusiastically, like it was amazing that Naruto was going to be watched constantly. Damn, you serious? Naruto grimaced, he thought he could get off scot-free if he explained the situation to the leader, apparently not. He really should have thought ahead, as if they would just let him go without thinking about the possible uses he could bring. No doubt. In the mind of the higher-ups and leaders he would prove to be useful with the knowledge about another dimension on his mind. At least he wasn't going to be tortured or something for information if he played his cards right, that would be unpleasant to say the least. Totally serious. Isn't that just great? The red-headed man lifted his arms up ecstatically, seemingly not noticing the grimace that Naruto had. Or maybe he's just a huge sadist, Naruto thought. Right now, you are the unofficial member of Rias Peerage. His statement caused Naruto to shudder. Why did he get the feeling that things were going to change from here on out? XXX. Naruto sat on the seat at the park he had been transported to. 
He really liked this place for some strange reason. Maybe it was because this park held such significance. He might be the only one who had traveled through dimensions like this and survived, and this park was where his new life started. It had been a few days since his meeting with Lucifer himself, and again, nothing had really changed. Well, no, a lot had changed actually. His school life was the exact same though. He thought that school would suck a bit more than usual, thinking that he was going to be followed around all day. But really, it was no different, other than the knowledge that he was now under their scope indefinitely. He had constantly been checking if anyone of Rhea's peerage, his peerage kind of, had been following him at any time, but he couldn't detect any of them. He did have very minor sensor capabilities because of his Uzumaki lineage, so he didn't really see any of them getting past his notice. Even if he didn't have crazy good sensor abilities like, say, Karen, he would still be able to sense anyone in a certain range if they didn't hide their chakra signatures. He very much doubted that they were capable of doing that, seeing as they didn't even know that one could have control over the elements with chakra, which was quite basic really, even though he only learned that when he got back from his training trip. Seriously, couldn't his senseis at least try to teach him? Uruka might have said something about the whole element manipulation in one of his lectures, but those lectures were just so damn boring. It seemed that the peerage had some trust in him, which was okay he guessed. He didn't take to being watched constantly nicely. It was also convenient that he wasn't under constant surveillance. It was that much easier to train. Even though his school life hadn't necessarily had any big changes, outside of school was completely different. He was now treated as a member of Rhea's peerage. He didn't see himself as being a servant of Rhea's, but he didn't complain when she had gotten him to do jobs for her. He was kind of bored outside of school. There was a plethora of things that he could do outside of school sure, but he liked being useful. The jobs that she got him to do were different from what he was expecting. He didn't think that devils would complete a task for a human who had a desire so that they would sign a contract to the devil that had completed said task. Well, he expected that devils would do something like that, but he thought the devils would double-cross the people that asked for assistance. They didn't though. It was actually rather tame like an organization that helps people out. He had gotten a grand total of two signed contracts from the two he had been assigned to. He shuddered at the second of those requests. Versing a nerd in a video game as a request was one thing, but watching some anime titled, Magical Girl Milky Spiral 7, with a roided up male that dressed like a little girl and said, NYU, in his speech at regular intervals was nightmare fuel. He really hoped that he wouldn't get a request from that individual again for some time. Or ever, if possible. He had done a bit of training in his apartment, surprisingly without blowing the place up, or not so surprisingly, seeing as how it was mostly just chakra control exercises. Along with the fox giving him a few tips for some of the techniques that Naruto was unfamiliar with, he breezed through it. He decided then that he would get check something out discreetly. Closing his eyes, he slowed his breathing and stilled, until he was more a statue than man. After some time, his eyes gained a slight orange pigment. He could still go into sage mode in the human world. Though he noticed something was different, he didn't feel as empowered as he usually felt. The feeling of natural chakra was rather dull right now. It took him a few minutes to realize what the problem was. His goddamn chakra. Fukusaku mentioned that only those with extreme chakra levels could utilize the natural energy and invoke senjutsu. Those with smaller reserves couldn't even use a partial amount of its abilities. Naruto was surprised that he could feel anything at all. He just chalked it up to the density of his chakra. Even though he didn't have much of it, his chakra was still much more potent than the regular ninja. He let go of the natural chakra and went back to normal with a frown on his face. Why the hell did nothing go smoothly for him? He guessed that he wouldn't be able to use senjutsu fully until he got his old reserves back. He checked his chakra stores and the frown turned into a small smile. The fox wasn't kidding when he said he would help. At this rate, his chakra would be back to normal very soon. He would still do the chakra control exercises though. When he got back to full reserves, he wanted to be able to concentrate his chakra more, even if he went back to his old world and there were no adversaries to face, he would become the world's strongest ninja dadbeo. Naruto got up and decided to leave for the time being. He would probably have to talk to Rias tomorrow about being the, unofficial, member of the peerage. Likely, he would have to do something as a member, even if he wasn't in name. If they were forcing him to do something malicious he would refuse, even if they said they would kill him if he didn't comply. Because he was just that awesome of a person. 
He nodded to himself. The blonde left the park behind with his hands in his pockets. After only a minute into his walking he heard a small gasp and turned his head. What he didn't expect to find was white panties with a creamy bottom staring back at him. The owner of the behind seemed to have fallen while she was walking, giving him an unrestricted view of her panties. He quickly turned his head away after realizing that he had been staring for a while. Until he realized that there was a girl that needed Humpy helping. He meant helping. Damn it Fox. Hey, you okay? Naruto asked, walking over to the girl. The girl seemed to get her wits about her when she heard his voice. Quickly covering up and turning around, she looked at the person the voice belonged to. A quick draft blew the nun hood that she had on her head, allowing Naruto to get a look of her features. The girl was the very definition of the word cute. Her big, bright green eyes, held such innocent curiosity that Naruto almost let out a squeal. Another noticeable feature was her blonde hair. It had a shade similar to Naruto's. She had a small bust compared to Rias and Akino's enormous size, but it was definitely not unappealing, they looked rather perky. The whiskered teen banished those thoughts upon noticing her staring at him. Her face took on a deep shade of scarlet when he stared back. Ah, she was shy. So adorable. Hey Anyo, I am a little lost, see could you help me out? She poked her index fingers together that reminded him of a certain white-eyed brunette. She even had the stutter down. Sure. Naruto responded with a kind smile on his face. He couldn't believe that just seconds ago he was thinking lewd thoughts about this girl. She was so innocent. Thank you. She said with a bright smile, a pink hue slightly lighting up her cheeks. XXX. What's your name? Naruto asked, his hands back in his pockets. A Asia. Asia Argento. Asia responded. She looked embarrassed for not remembering to give her name to the boy. I'll call you Asia-chan then. Naruto proclaimed, I'm Uzumaki Naruto, just call me Naruto. He pointed to his chest with his thumb, while giving her a wide, toothy smile. She looked up to him and flushed. Naruto-san, she said with a nod. Naruto didn't protest, if she wanted to stick the suffix there then that was fine. So cute, he crowed, hugging her while rubbing their cheeks together. This caused the girl's already red face to go into shade of red so bright that he wasn't even sure it was a shade that was known to man. Naruto was a sucker for cute things, he wouldn't deny that. And this girl seemed to have cuteness in spades. Na Naruto-san, she gasped. Though, she seemed to like the affection that Naruto was giving her, he noticed. She didn't look like she was used to it though. Naruto stopped his affectionate actions when he saw that a boy nearby had fallen over on the sidewalk. The child held up his scraped knee and started crying. Both blondes looked over to him, Naruto let go and started walking over to the boy. Before he could reach the kid however, Asia ran over to him. She kneeled down to look at the scraped knee and put her hand to it. Don't worry, I'll heal it for you, she said gently. Naruto half expected her to pull out a band-aid or pray for it. The green glowing light that protruded from her hand onto the boy's injury was not what the blonde was expecting. The boy on the ground stopped crying and looked at the injury that had begun healing in awe. As did Naruto, he had seen medical ninjutsu before, but for a regular human to be capable of it was quite something. The injury healed within seconds. Thanks Oni-san, the boy said to her, before running back to his friends that were looking over at him. You know, Naruto begun, I don't think it is all that normal to be able to heal injuries like that just by placing your hand over it. He said lightly. He needed to know what that power was. That is a gift that I received from God. She replied with a sad smile. Naruto frowned at the melancholic look that she had on her face. He had to find out about her powers, but seeing her sad affected him more than he liked to admit. So, he would do something uncharacteristic and unbecoming of a ninja of his stature. He would let it slide. He would confront her on it later, but right now he didn't want to bring up sad memories for the girl. It was their first meeting and she was just too damned kind to be sad. The two continued their walk after his outburst, until Naruto saw the church in the distance. His body froze up when he saw the building. He felt some force almost repel him from the gothic-looking structure. It's over there. He gestured to the building, not letting his inner feelings to be known to the kind girl beside him. Ah, thank you so much Naruto-san. She said happily. She turned to him and gave him an innocent smile. My pleasure Asia-chan, after all, I couldn't just leave my cute little Imouto alone could I? Naruto said with teasing smile. I Imouto, 
She looked shocked at receiving the title. She then looked unsure, poking her index fingers together and taking quick glances at him before looking away. I'm, I'm your Imo Udo. She asked, almost self-consciously. As if he could say no to that. It would be like killing a puppy. Yeah, of course. He said kindly. His answer was apparently the right one, if the way that she beamed at him was any indication. I'm so lucky I got to meet Naruto-san. You're so kind and gentle. She said with her decidedly innocent smile back in place. If you ever have time you should visit me in the church. Promise me okay. I will. See you soon. He waved while leaving. Hi, Oni-chan. She said, waving back, before she ran in the direction of the church. Naruto turned back to study her fleeting form. He was interested in that power that she had. Sure, he didn't bring it up after the emotions she displayed after using the power, but he had to wonder. Was she just able to use medical chakra? No, he doubted it. Even if medical ninjas usually had less chakra because they needed precise control, they still needed more than she had. He could sense that she was just a regular civilian, other than that strange power she had, she was completely normal. Perhaps she was some kind of rarity amongst the humans that lived here. Someone who had inherent powers. Damn, he really had been overthinking a lot of things lately. Maybe he should take a page out of Shikamaru's book and lays around a little bit. He shook off the thought. He had to go see Rias and ask her what was up with his reaction at seeing the church. There was no way that he would have such a reaction normally. He walked to where he believed the school was. XXX. You are not to see that girl again. Those were the words that Naruto heard after explaining who he had met. His eyes narrowed at the command. The two were in the occult research club room alone. The rest had gone home. Leaving Rias and him. And why would that be? He asked the beautiful woman that was looking at him with a serious gaze, and if Naruto was correct, a hint of concern. Anyone who is affiliated with the church is dangerous to us. She is in league of the enemy, and I will not have one of my precious servants talk to someone that will put them in danger. She said. Naruto was actually kind of touched. He wasn't expecting her to be so protective of him. Yeah, he didn't hate her, but he never saw them as being close, considering she's his proverbial jailer. Still, he wasn't going to take no for an answer. Rias, I can't just not talk to her again for your own prejudiced conceptions. Naruto stated. It is not prejudiced, they are a literal threat to us. If they find out that you are a devil, even part devil, then they will kill you on the spot. Rias said. She stood up from her desk and walked over to him. When she reached him, she stroked her fingers lightly on his cheek. Against his will, he leaned into it. The soft digits felt pleasant on his skin. I will not forgive them if they hurt my cute servant. Rias said gently. Naruto let out a slight purr. Then his eyes snapped open. He looked worriedly at Rias, who was trying to hide her giggles. You heard that didn't you? He asked, even though he knew the answer. Maybe, she said teasingly. She had a glint in her eyes, one that spelled trouble for Naruto in the future. Again, he cursed the fox. He was trying to be domineering in this situation, but here he was, purring at the touch of her hand on his whisker-like birthmarks. It seemed that some of the characteristics Naruto gained included his, whiskers, being sensitive. He sighed. He looked back into her eyes. I will not go back on my promise to talk with her again. But I do realize that the church is dangerous for me right now. I won't visit her, but if I see her in town at all, then I won't snub her. She is my friend, and I can't see her as being a threat to anyone. He smiled. Believe me, I am an excellent judge of character. Maybe he wasn't. He did have a revenge-obsessed emo for a best friend, and he did fully believe that Kabuto was a nice dude at the Chunin exams. Although, he couldn't be faulted for that, after all that dude was a crazy good actor, plus everyone got fooled by that guy. Even though he was a sick bastard, he was a damn good spy. I can't say that I agree with what you just said, but I know that I won't be able to change your decision. She said depressingly. Then she put on a smile, I guess that's just who you are. Uh, Naruto blinked at the almost wistful tone of her voice. Thanks, Naruto responded. Be careful Naruto, she said. He was about to say something back when a pentagram appeared on the floor. The red light illuminated the room, alerting the two occupants that someone was summoning them. Please do that request, after you are done come back to the room. I wish to talk to you more, Rias said with her hypnotic voice. Yeah, okay, the blonde shinobi said, shrugging. 
he walked over to the magical circle and teleported away. XXX. Naruto's nostrils were permeated with a familiar smell. Blood. His mind went into full alert. He quickly looked to the floorboards and the wall to find them covered in blood. He followed the trail of blood to the door in front of him was half opened, the only source of light in the room on the other side of the door. He took slow, quiet steps while crouching low on the ground. He peered his head out of the door to find a silver-haired male sitting on one of the couches in the apartment. Naruto could only see his back, but the air of nonchalance was around him. Naruto scanned the area. The blood led to the right side of the room. He looked over to find a corpse of a man that was crucified on the wall. He looked back towards the man who had likely caused this murder. The blonde could kill the man swiftly I he wanted to, but he had to find out what the man wanted and what he gained from killing the man that was now just a gruesome display on the wall. The whiskered ninja walked silently to the guy on the couch. His steps making no sound at all. He flashed out his kanai, while going over to the most likely soon to be dead man. Without warning, Naruto put the kanai to his throat. If you do not listen to my demands then I will slit your throat. Naruto whispered coldly into the now surprised man's ear. The surprise didn't last however, as a deranged smile threatened to split the man's face. Little devil is making demands. The man said in some twisted amusement. Naruto narrowed his eyes. This guy was obviously not all there. That would make his interrogation that much more difficult. The man also knew that Naruto was a devil. Yes, and little devil doesn't want to have to cut off one of your little fingers, so answer my questions. The first step to interrogation was to be an immovable object. If the individual in questioning tries to taunt you, you throw it back at them while threatening them at the same time. Oh, and he has a brain on him too, that's ing hilarious. The man exclaimed with a laugh. Okay, so maybe this guy would be a little bit harder to crack than a regular person, probably due to his sanity or lack thereof. Time for some reinforcement. Grabbing the guy's hair, the blonde pulled his head back and so the man could see the icy look of Naruto's eyes. The blonde let out a deep growl, sending killing intent to the man, making him receive the brunt of it due to the close proximity and concentration that Naruto was sending out at him. What is your name? Naruto applied more pressure on the blade so that it was dangerously close to spilling the man's blood. Freed Selzen, nice to meet you shitty devil. The man introduced himself, letting his tongue flop out of his grinning mouth. Despite the killing intent that Naruto was sending to the man, he seemed totally unaffected. Nice to see you complying. Now, for what purpose did you kill this? His question was cut short by a gasp to his left. He turned his head to find dazzling green eyes staring at him in shock. N Naruto-san. Wait, Asia-chan, what are you? Again his sentence was interrupted by the sound of a blade coming out of its sheath. Naruto was just able to jump back from the blade before it impaled his face. He landed next to the wall, next to the dead body that was hanging limply. Naruto looked to Freed and found the deranged smile that had yet to leave his features. His red eyes glowed ominously in the dark room. The white-haired man sported a large black trench coat with golden trimmings over an exorcist uniform. He also had a golden necklace in the shape of a cross. His insane eyes looked over to the blonde girl, then back to Naruto. Then his already large grin widened even more. Oh, so you know this shitty devil Asia Chan. The man said. Freed San, what is that man doing on the wall? Her eyes were wide and beginning to tear up at the sight of a man killed in such a way. I almost forgot. You're new here aren't you Asia Chan? The man didn't keep his eyes off of Naruto as he pulled out a gun and let his sword drop into a ready stance. Naruto eyed the weapons for a moment. The sword did not look normal. It was glowing brightly, likewise, the gun didn't feel normal either. These were probably the light weapons that Rias mentioned before. Even if the guy in front of him was a regular human he was a threat. Our duty is to kill shitty devils and the shitty followers of those shitty devils. The man lacked a decent vocabulary for cuss words it seemed. Naruto-san. Are, are you a devil? The girl looked shocked. Partly. Yeah, I will explain it to you later, but first I gotta get you away from this guy. His eyes turned to the girl but his attention was mostly on Freed. Wait in the bedroom, I will come get you after I'm done with him. He said with a reassuring smile, even though his face was turned to Freed, it seemed to quell the girl's fears. She nodded and ran out the door. Naruto focused his eyes back on the crazy man that was in front of him. The smile completely gone, leaving an icy look of disdain. You dragged Asia Chan into this. Naruto hissed. 
Yeah, the bitch is useful for a couple of things. I haven't pounded that virgin soil yet, but I would have if you had have taken any longer. Freed said with a leer. The exorcist lifted his gun and pointed it at Naruto. Naruto for his part, increased the output of killing intent until even Freed realized that what he said might have been a bit too much. The anger that Naruto was feeling was almost palpable, rolling off his person-like waves. His eyes bled into violent red. He abstained from using too much of Kyubi's chakra, but it was becoming increasingly difficult to not go into a fit of absolute rage. His fangs elongated to the point where they were poking out from his lips, resting on the bottom lip. His eyes also darkened as he felt what little of his self-control that he had left rapidly diminish as he looked at the grin that hadn't left the bastard's face. Freed let out a maniacal laugh as he pulled the trigger of the gun that was aimed at Naruto. Before the bullet left the barrel, Naruto threw the kunai at an inhuman speed. The blade hit the hand that held the gun, blood flying from the gash. Not expecting the pain to erupt from his hand, Freed dropped the gun and yelped. The time was all that Naruto needed. Naruto's form blurred as he ran at Freed, closing the distance between them in less than a second. Naruto grabbed the blade's hilt. He kicked Freed in the stomach while pulling on the hilt from Freed's hand, sending him to the other side of the room. The deranged priest hit the wall, almost breaking through the side. Naruto took a moment to eye the weapon in his hand. The light of the sword was burning his skin slightly due to the close proximity. He paid it no mind though, he could deal with the pain. Naruto looked back at the silver-haired man and was surprised to see that the man was running back towards the blonde. Seconds later. Naruto jumped while leaning his body back. He flipped over the coffee table and couch, landing on the other side of the furniture. He quickly ducked his head, avoiding another shot from the large pistol. He crouched behind the chair. Shit. Now he had a maniac on the other side of the room who was aiming at Naruto with a freaking gun. Naruto had not had an encounter with a weapon like this before. He had heard about guns in this world, but he had never had to fight someone who wielded one. Back in his home world, they stuck to good old-fashioned blades and explosive tags. This weapon that he was now facing was much more dangerous than a simple shuriken. One shot of the gun could cripple him indefinitely or kill him in a shot if aimed at the right spot, which wasn't what made it especially hard to deal with, oh no. It was the speed. The bullets also went faster than even Naruto's own enhanced vision could see. He needed to come up with a strategy. Several close shots later, he figured out what he could do. Naruto put his hands into a familiar, cross-shaped sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, he whispered. A clone popped into existence next to the original. The clone gave a silent nod and jumped over the couch, running at the mad exorcist that was literally gunning for him. The original Naruto put his eye to one of the bullet holes in the couch. He watched as his clone was predictably shot, and it popped into a cloud of smoke. Naruto ignored the phantom pain that he felt from gaining the clone's memories. He launched himself to Freed's position. Freed's eyes widened in surprise. He looked at the cloud of smoke with disbelief. That was when Naruto shot through the smoke. Freed, in his surprise, couldn't react in time for the punch that was sent to his face. Naruto heard a satisfying crunch upon contact. The sound was probably the broken nose that Freed now sported. The exorcist was sent rocketing through the room, hitting almost all of the furniture. His body came to a stop after sliding on the hardwood floor for a couple of seconds. This time, Naruto did not wait to see if he would get back up. Sprinting towards the body on the ground, he stabbed Freed in the arm that held the gun. The priest proved that his pain tolerance was insane for just a regular person by not showing his pain except the grinding of his teeth and the pronounced wince. He did hear that only special individuals could use light swords to their full potential. Though, Naruto couldn't see this guy as being special in any way other than his sick, twisted mindset. I will ing kill you. You piece of shit devil. Again with the shitty devil thing, Naruto thought. He set his eyes on the enraged look Freed was giving him. The look was kind of justified really. People didn't take to getting stabbed in the arm lightly. Especially if you broke their nose not a minute before. Not that Naruto cared. If you value your tongue then I suggest you shut up. You will only speak when I ask you questions. Naruto twisted the blade to pronounce the threat. Instead of listening though, Freed just spat in his face. Then Naruto screamed. He clutched his face with his free hand to try and soothe the pain. The spit felt like acid that was burning into his face. While Naruto writhed in pain, Freed sweep kicked Naruto to the floor. The blonde regained his bearings within a second. 
Naruto tried to ignore the pain as best he could as he attempted to grab the sword that was still impaled in Freed's arm. Before he could get it, the man grabbed it by the blade, and pulled it out himself. The priest swung the sword at Naruto's outstretched hand, cutting into the flesh deeply. Naruto hissed and pulled his hand back. He himself had a very high pain tolerance, but this pain was something else. How did you like that holy water you? Freed yelled, laughing despite his obvious pain. The man got to his feet and looked back at Naruto with a vicious smirk. Naruto's red eyes met with Freed's own red orbs. One pair held only insanity and bloodlust, while the other held a righteous rage. Before either could move however, a magic circle flashed into existence on the ground. Hiba appeared from the circle. It all happened so quickly. Hiba sliced Freed's chest, leaving a long, narrow gash, and kicked the new cut that formed. This time, Freed did scream, as he fell back. Naruto would have winced in sympathy if he wasn't starting to seriously hate this man. Sorry to interrupt, Hiba said with his patented Bashonen smile, but he is one of us. Next to come was Akino, who materialized out of the pentagram. Era era, there seems to be a problem here. Exorcist, this was said by Kaneko, who also came out of the glowing red magic circle. It was the first time that Naruto had actually heard her talk. He was surprised by the monotone tone of her voice, but it had its own charm to it. Last to appear was Rias, who made the most grandiose arrival out of the four. Dark red and black energy shot from where she stood, leaving Freed, who had only just gotten back up, with only a second to jump out of the way to avoid the dark-looking energy. Naruto looked at the peerage, then back to Freed. Freed looked at the new arrivals in annoyance. More shitty devils that came to interrupt his fun. Leave. This guy is dangerous, he has a light sword and gun. I don't know if he has any more holy water on him, but if he does it hurts, a lot. Naruto informed them quickly. It really did. His face was having a difficult time healing, it was he would feel the boiling flesh, it probably didn't look too appealing. He could feel that it was starting to heal a bit faster though. He didn't want to put anyone in danger, and this guy proved to be quite a threat. Even though the exorcist must have been near his limit, the crazed man probably had a couple more tricks up his sleeve. Granted, Naruto was able to beat him swiftly. The only reason the blonde ninja was in such a state was because he didn't expect the guy to spit something that burned through his skin like that. Naruto, what are you saying? You aren't in any state to fight him. Rias told him, her form was slowly being clouded by a crimson aura. She looked extremely intimidating. The red-haired devil was giving Freed a death glare. I can beat this guy fine. Don't try to fight him. Go protect Asia, he said dismissively. Before the redhead could respond, Akino butted in. Bushu, there will be reinforcements coming. She said. Her eyes darkened gravely. Shit, we have to finish this quickly. Yuto cursed. Kaneko just nodded while putting on her gloves. They all got into fighting stances. Akino had lightning that was zapping and crackling in her right hand. Rias summoned more of her dark aura. Yuto pulled his sword out and put his right foot forward, bending it, so if he had to spring forward quickly he could more easily. Kaneko picked up a large table over her head with little effort, after putting on both of her fingerless gloves. Freed finally looked wary of the devils that had appeared. He realized that the two chicks with Big knew how to focus their powers a lot more effectively than the blonde kid could. Plus, with this many devils to face, it was suicidal. Especially considering the injuries that he had gained through the fight. Luckily for him, a portal appeared above his head just in time to make the peerage to stop in their tracks. Ha ha ha, looks like I got back up. Time for us to kill you worms. Freed yelled the last part sweetly, as if he was talking about an adorable kitten. Bushu. Our top priority is to help Naruto-kun. Akino didn't say the nickname she made up for him in this dire situation. Before any of the peerage members could react, Naruto sprung into the room that Asia had ran into. The blonde kicked open the door. The first thing that came into view was the large portal that was similar to the one that had formed in the living room. It was pretty hard to miss it. When he looked what was inside it, his heart froze. Standing inside the portal was a large man. His attire consisted of a pale violet trench coat over a white dress shirt with a matching ascot, black pants and shoes, and a black fedora. He looked to be a middle-aged man, with black hair and dark blue eyes. His face held a haughty smirk. The man wasn't what caused his heart to freeze however. What he was holding was. In his arms was an unconscious Asia. He was holding her limp form in a bridal carry. 
Naruto moved to jump at the man, but it was too late. The man disappeared along with Asia, smirk still in place. Naruto cursed every deity he could think of. He was too late. She was captured and it was his fault. Naruto sprinted back to the living room. Focused on interrogating that bastard, and all of his reinforcements. He went into the room to see it was empty, all except for his peerage that were looking to where the portal had been. Where the hell are they? Naruto demanded, causing the occupants to look at him in surprise. He had never raised his voice to them in the time that they had known him. Akino was the first to recover. They said that they got what they wanted, and then they just left. She seemed confused at the fallen angel's quick departure. Shit. Naruto cursed under his breath. He should have kept Asia in his sights. We have to save her. He said but then fell to his knees hissing in pain. Naruto. Rias exclaimed. She kneeled to his position and cupped his chin. Naruto meanwhile was wondering what the hell was up with his body. Did the light of the sword have such a large effect on him? No, that couldn't be it, the cut did take a while longer than he was expecting it to heal up, but that was to be expected. The light did slow down the healing processes of a devil after all. Even with Kyubi it would take a little while longer. Was it the holy water? Possibly. The holy water was also in his mouth, so it could have made its way into his insides and affected him. Then he realized. Kyubi. He groaned. He didn't even try to use the chakra. There was only that little bit that he unconsciously used because of his anger towards Freed. Though, he did notice that the strain from using it was significantly less than what it was when he fought against Rainair. Akino, make a teleporting circle now. Rias said to her queen. Hi, Bushu. The raven-haired woman nodded dutifully. He stretched her hands forward and began constructing a magical circle. Naruto looked over to where he had last seen Freed. Screw the information. Naruto was going to kill him. What did you just say? Naruto asked with a dangerous tone. He was standing in front of Rias' desk, where she was looking at him warily, like he was going to jump over the wooden table and kill her if she did repeat what she just said. The peerage were also slightly on edge from Naruto's words, or more accurately how they were spoken. Each one ready to protect their king if need be. It was the late afternoon, a day after the incident with Freed and the fallen angels. Naruto had completely healed up from the injuries that he sustained last night. I said I will not allow you to save her. The church is under Rainer's siege. We can't tell how many enemies there will be, and I won't have you die for a girl you have only just met. Rhea stated while putting on her most authoritative voice. But it was difficult to keep up a confident exposition with those icy blue orbs boring into her own. You think you have the right to order me? He asked. His voice still had a dangerous edge to it. No. She said, I don't have the right to, you are not an official part of my peerage. This is a request, please don't go, she said, trying to not make her words seem too pleading. It was true that she didn't have a hold over what he did, but this was for his own good. Please listen to reason, not only is it dangerous for you, but we also run the risk of starting a war if these fallen angels are under orders from their leaders. Naruto wasn't expecting that response. That still didn't change what he had decided he was going to do, but it was nice that she truly didn't think that she controlled his life. The fact that she was telling him to stay for his own safety did bring a warmth to his heart. He did understand the severity that his decision held quite a bit of weight though. Rias Chan, I'm going to save her, nothing you say will change that. She is an innocent, yet they are holding her hostage for reasons out of her control. I am not going to just leave her to whatever those guys plan on doing with her. Naruto could guess what they wanted her for. That healing ability was the only reason they would want her that he knew of. They were probably going to extract the ability from her, or brainwash the poor girl into doing their bidding. If that happened then he wouldn't be able to forgive himself for not doing anything. I will take full responsibility, and take the blame of it all in case they wage war. You can't do that, they will kill you. She was trying her best to describe the absurdity on what he insisted on doing. There was a line between heroic and just plain foolish. If he actually went through with that, then the fallen angels would kill him in a public display to show the devils should not cross their path. I don't care, Naruto said, turning away from the red-headed beauty and walking to the door that separated them from the hallways. He put his hand on the doorknob, but looked back to all of the people. I won't turn my back from my friends. With that he left. Idiot, Rias muttered, saying such cool things won't save you. Even if he is being unreasonable, we can't just leave him. Kiba said, 
Leaving his spot where he was leaning his back against the wall on the corner of the room, he walked over to the middle of the room. You're not seriously thinking of leaving him, are you? Even if she didn't help out he would follow her. But it would still knock his respect for the girl down a few pegs. Of course not. She almost snapped. Then she sighed to try to calm down. I just don't want to put you guys in danger as well. Why did that blonde boy have to be so infuriating? It was noble, but she was worried for him. Bushu, you can send me alone, I will make sure to keep him safe. Yuto bowed. No, that means that you will both die. And even if the fallen angels are going against orders, they'll still outnumber both of you. She said, rubbing her temples in an attempt to massage some ideas out of her head. There had to be a way to get out of this. The peerage all stayed silent, but Rias could tell from their facial expressions they all wanted to do the same thing. They all wanted to help their friend. Even Kaneko seemed set on helping out surprisingly. Rias couldn't help the smile that came to her face as she made her decision. XXX. Outside of the church footsteps could be heard echoing through the courtyard. At a slow, methodical pace. Feet cracking lightly on the pavement. Naruto walked calmly to the entrance of the church. He was going to try sneaking in but found a distortion of air around the church. It was almost unnoticeable, but he was able to find it before attempting to sneak in. The fallen angels had conjured a barrier that would alert them to anyone's presence, or that is what he thought it was. It was reminiscent of the barrier that was around Konoha, so he speculated and made a judgment from past experience. Even if he tried to go in unnoticed it would be for naught, they would know he was there. There was another reason that he was walking in such a slow gait. Calmly walking in would make the fallen angels overconfident, thinking that he was too dumb to try to at least attempt to get in discreetly. He wasn't going to prolong these fights, he was going to get in, take Asia, and get out. Simple. Some would think that he was being arrogant, thinking he could beat all of the enemies that would be waiting on his arrival, but he knew better. Rainair might have won first round, but that was hardly fair. He had no chakra that he could safely use in that fight. Now that he had a huge surge in his chakra stores things would be different. He couldn't use any of his high-tier techniques, but he now had the strength and speed of what he had in the elemental nations when he wasn't in sage mode. Faster really, if he took into account the part devil side of him. Back when he sprinted to class shortly after being healed by Rius, he zoomed at an inhuman rate. Without the use of chakra, he was able to run at such a speed because of the benefit of being part devil and having a trained physique. If he used chakra to speed up his movements on top of that, he would likely have another huge boost in speed power. He could safely say that he would be able to beat the fallen angels if there weren't a copious amount in the church. These beings were much more powerful than regular humans and even some of the ninjas of his old world shore, but they lacked official training. He wasn't sure how much experience these people had, but he doubted it would matter in the long run. Naruto was able to keep up with Rainer when he didn't have chakra, now that he did have some it wouldn't take that much effort to beat her, along with any of her lackeys. He was shot out of his thoughts when three fallen angels flew down a few meters in front of where Naruto was standing. He analyzed them with a keen eye. The first he noticed was the asshole that took Asia in the first place. The man had the same outfit and that same, damn arrogant smirk. The other two were new to him. The first was a young-looking girl that one could describe as cute. She had her hair styled in twin short side ponytails with a black bow on top, and had light blue eyes. Her attire consisted of a black gothic lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow at the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar. White thigh-high socks, and black shoes. The second was a tall, buxom woman with long, navy blue hair that slightly obscured her right eye. Her clothes were not as, reserved as her companions. Her top was similar to a trench coat in style with a wide collar, matching miniskirt and black-heeled shoes. The trench coat top was very open, revealing an unholy amount of cleavage. The most noticeable accessory she had on was the gold necklace around her neck. They stood in front of him proudly, each looking certain of their victory against a single measly devil. That was good. They had the same attitude as Rainer, thinking they were superior to him. We meet again, boy. Donesik addressed Naruto. It was a huge pleasure the last time too. Naruto said dryly with a heavy undertone of sarcasm. Rainer would probably had at least a slight fear of Naruto, considering their last encounter. The barrier that they set up must not enable them to tell who was in the space. Either that, 
or the three in front of him were just foolish, not listening to Rainer's words of warning she would no doubt have about the blonde. He was leaning towards the former rather than the latter. It would be very difficult to construct a barrier so sophisticated that it could pinpoint identity or stats on the person who walked past it. You know this guy Donacek? The blonde girl asked in a childish tone. Saw him once, yeah. Donacek replied with a shrug. It doesn't matter, said the tall woman next to the smaller girl. She looked irritated. Let's just kill him and head back. Moo. The blonde girl pouted, you're no fun. She turned to her fellow blonde, I'm Mittelt. That's Kalawarner and Donacek. We're your killers, the girl said in an excited way. Naruto had to raise an eyebrow at her way of speaking. Was she a psycho girl? Idiot. Kalawarner scowled. She then got in her fighting stance as did her two partners. Naruto. At your service. The spiky-haired shinobi said. Naruto relaxed his pose, looking as if the fact that they were going to attack him didn't bother him in the slightest. He did it in hopes to make them more irritated, which it did, predictably. Kalawarner wings busted out of her back, and she shot forward like a bullet. Sailing towards the shinobi with purpose. Naruto pulled his chakra through his muscles and dodged to the side. Kalawarner didn't expect the speed he displayed. She tried to change her direction in mid-flight towards his current location but didn't get the chance. Naruto sped to her side and grabbed her left arm. He pulled her into the concrete. With the speed she was going and the force of the pull, she couldn't right herself quickly enough to cushion the impact of her face to the ground. Her body rolled into one of the trees. A human would have died from a hit to the head like that, but she was likely just dazed. Before he could deliver a finishing strike to the busty woman, he had to jump out of the way of Golden Lightning Bolt. He looked up to see Mittelt in the air with her dark angelic wings flapping lazily behind her. Her hand was coated in more of that electric-looking energy, almost like a golden chidori. Naruto tilted his head out of the way just in time to dodge the spear of light that was going to stab into his eye. Donacek had ran towards him during him and Kalawarner's encounter it seemed. The man had his spear in his hand pointed directly to where Naruto's head used to be. The blonde shinobi coated his hand with his wind chakra and grabbed the spear at its halfway point. He was glad that his guess was right with how his chakra would shield him from any real damaging effects from the light of the spear. Donacek was startled when he saw the blonde boy undamaged from holding the light spear. Naruto capitalized on the fallen angel's surprise by punching the man in the gut with enough power to send the man's spit flying onto the ground. The blonde then grabbed the man's hunched over back by his trench coat and jumped to Mittelt's position in the sky, dragging the man along for the ride. The blonde girl didn't know what to do. She couldn't use a light spear or her energy to kill the boy who was shooting towards her like a rocket with her superior in tow, because her attacker could just use Donacek to block. She decided to attempt to evade the boy, but she didn't take into account the boy's ability to throw. Naruto threw Donacek violently towards the blonde Lolita at a startling speed. She didn't dodge in time, and his Donacek's larger form impacted her, sending them crashing down to the floor in a heap. Naruto's ears pricked at the sound of something whistling in his direction. He twisted his body sideways and straightened his legs, spreading them wide, still around 10 meters off the ground. A brightly glowing spear shot between his legs harmlessly, the spot where his upper body had been before he twisted his body to the side. Naruto flipped a few times before landing on the ground. Kalawarner was looking at him with an angry sneer on her face. She flashed another spear into her hand and flew over to him lowly like she had before, albeit much slower this time around. Her other hand flashed during her flight with yet another spear of light coming into existence. Naruto had to wonder what the spears were actually made of. He pushed those thoughts aside when she let out an enraged cry and landed in front of him. Kalawarner slashed towards his chest, but he evaded with little effort. She quickly tried to stab him in the stomach but he simply twisted his body to evade much like he had the last time. Her attempts to stab and slash him increased in speed with each strike the blonde dodged and blocked because of her increasing irritation. Even though she was speeding up it still seemed like she was wading through water to Naruto. His eyes were accustomed to faster speeds than this, and now he had his speed back up to par it was so very easy to evade and block each and every one of her attacks. Without warning. She stabbed him in the chest with both of her weapons, or would have if he had not ducked under her strike. The blonde went into her personal bubble swiftly. With her arms still straight forward, Kalawarner was forced to try and kick the blonde who was now up close and personal. Before she could even lift her leg however, 
Naruto hit her face with a right hook, but he didn't end his advantage with just that. After the punch he grabbed her arm and flipped her, sweeping her legs from under her as he did. She landed on her back painfully, mostly because of the force Naruto flipped her, and had her weapons taken away from her, thrown into the forested area around the two. He gave another sharp punch while she was on the floor, this one with more added force, knocking her into a dreamless sleep. He wasn't allowed to bask in his victory as he was forced to dodge another one of the damnable light spears that he was beginning to liken to annoyances. He looked to see Miltelt flying towards him at a slow pace. He then heard the winds picking up at a fair distance behind him. It was probably Donaseek trying to swoop down to kill him without Naruto noticing him. He was coming in for Naruto's back. They thought that such a cheap trick would work against him. It certainly wasn't the most original plan that Naruto had seen. Then again, it wasn't very fair. Ninjas were crafty and deceptive because they had to be. These fallen angels had nothing on the people back home. Naruto kept his eyes on Mitelt, tricking her into thinking that he had not already noticed the man. He could see that she was trying to hold back a victorious smirk. This caused Naruto to hold back his own. Naruto counted slowly from five in his mind. Five, four, three, two, one, now. He mentally screamed. Naruto deftly rolled to the side and looked at his would-be killer. The man looked surprised at the movement. The blonde didn't give the man the time to gather his thoughts though. Naruto sent an earth-shattering roundhouse kick to the man's jaw as Donaseek still sped through the air, near where Naruto had been, right over Kalawarner prone form. Donaseek was sent rocketing towards a nearby tree. The tree broke when he hit it, as did the next after that. The fedora-wearing man was out for the count. There was no way the man was conscious after that. Naruto even had to give a light shake to his leg to get the numbness that was crawling into it. He looked over, almost lazily, to the blonde girl who was staring at him disbelievingly. Both Donaseek and Kalawarner were her superiors, they were much better at fighting than her. Yet this boy had taken both of them out without using magic and he didn't even seem winded. Her wings flared behind her, and she began to retreat. She had to tell Rainair about this. Mitelp turned her head away from the blonde boy only to find another identical one right in front of her. Huh. All her thoughts went blank as the Naruto look-alike chopped her neck, knocking her out cold. She fell limply to the ground, not even stirring as her body impacted the hard floor. Naruto had planted a clone there for that reason. If he didn't knock out all three in time then there would be someone who would try to warn Rainair that he was more dangerous than they anticipated. He would leave the clone to take them by surprise. And it worked brilliantly. He moved along to the church, knowing that the clone would carry out the task of tying up the fallen angels he had taken out. XXX. Where are those three? Rainair thought irritably. She expected them back by now. It was only one target. They should have been done in a couple of minutes at the most. Well, it didn't matter. She would start the ritual without them. Rainair looked to the girl who was tied onto the cross on a stage-like area. There was an army of exorcists in front of the stage, waiting on Rainair's commands. They all had dark bandit masks on, obscuring their features. The fallen angel walked up the steps and next to the innocent girl who began to stir. Those brilliant green irises of Asia's opened. After a few seconds of blinking she started to look confused. You're in the church, Rainair explained, knowing what the girl was going to ask. Asia turned her head to Rainair and her eyes widened. Rainair smirked at the reaction she got from Asia. She would admit to being a sadist, it was the darkness that she held in herself that made her fall from heaven after all. She had lived a very long life, and from her experiences, she had deduced that humans and other beings were assholes. Creatures who live only for themselves. This girl being innocent didn't really bother her, the girl would probably fall into the dark abyss that was selfishness. And if she didn't it still didn't matter to Rainair. Rainair had worked under God as an angel, and it was boring being so pure. She needed to spice up her life, so she fell into greed. She desired power, because she was just a pawn, like every other angel she worked with. That was all most people were, pawns. Except for those who ruled those pawns, and that's what she wanted. She wanted that power to rule over people, that feeling of superiority. And if she had to do these unforgivable acts to gain what she desired then so be it. Devils and humans had done similar things constantly throughout history. So why would she waste the rest of her long life doing nothing but work under someone for no pay off at the end, other than knowing they helped being so selfish out, nay, dedicated her life to helping them. 
Angels were foot soldiers to keep the general public of humans happy after all. They helped humans out for their own sense of justice, a justice that was flawed in her opinion. Though, she was biased in that aspect. What are you doing, Rainer San? Asia asked, frightened. I'm going to take that power from you. She answered simply. Why you're going to take my healing ability away? Asia asked. Yes. Isn't that what you've always wanted? Somewhere deep within you, you've always hated this power. It has caused you so many problems no. Rainer questioned, legitimately curious. This power had caused her pain, rejection, why would she want to keep such a gift? And if she didn't want it, then Rainer would gladly take it from her. Asia looked unsure for a second, but then her eyes lit with determination. It's true that I don't love the power that I was born with. But I want to help people no matter what. Asia replied. Rainer was about to ask her some more, until she realized she was asking these superficial questions of a mere child. A girl who was lifetimes behind her in experience. This girl knew nothing. Rainer didn't really mind that Asia ended up wanting it, she didn't deserve its power. She was weak, pitiful. Rainer moved forward to the girl. She was about to commence the ritual when the doors slammed open. All the occupants of the room turned to look at the newcomer, with only the two girls on the stage knowing who the man was. Asia's and Rainer's eyes widened, both showing varying emotions. Asia, with innocent adoration and hope in her eyes, and Rainer, who had a righteous fear of the blonde. Naruto walked down the stairs slowly. His eyes didn't break contact with Rainer's the entire trip down the stairs. It seems that I didn't get the message across before, Rainer. Naruto said, I warned you of trying to harm anyone from this city again. His eyes bled into crimson red, perhaps I should teach you another lesson. Rainer started to break out in a cold sweat. Last time she had seen those eyes, she went into a very painful beat down. The man in front of her could be extremely intimidating if he wanted to be. She gulped down her fear and put on her most genuine looking smirk. You think you can stop me with all of my minions here? She asked, her voice not betraying her thoughts of doubt. She had a long while to brush up her acting skills. The blonde spared them a glance then looked back towards her. You and I both know that is a bluff. Your minions can do little against me. He made a gesture behind him. If you value your friends lives you will let Asia Chan go. They were a means to an end. She shrugged. I needed them to guard the area from intruders and they failed. They're useless to me now. I dislike people like you the most. Naruto said narrowing his red eyes, using people like puppets for your own gain. Isn't that what people strive to do? To accumulate people to do your bidding. She said. I don't want a philosophy lecture while you are holding my friend captive. If you give up now, then I will give you one more chance. Ha ha ha. Are you an idiot? You are so trusting. She exclaimed. Naruto just shrugged lightly at her amused cries. I believe that there is good in everyone. Even someone like you. He said. Again, I'll ask you nicely. Please give me back Asia Chan. If you don't, then I won't be responsible for what happens to you. His eyes flashed. Rainer actually hesitated for a second. She would be forced to fight this man again if she went through with extracting the twilight healing from the blonde girl. If she handed the girl over to the boy though, all of this would have been for nothing. She lied to her superiors for this chance, that healing power would be a huge boost in her prestige when it came to power. The raven-haired girl squashed any doubt she had. There was no way she could go back to being just an insignificant piece of someone. She didn't want to be controlled for another second. Sorry, but I can't stop here. Kill the boy. She demanded to the army of people in the room. They all obeyed without protest, sprinting at Naruto with their swords raised to attack. Naruto let out a sigh, but raised his own weapon. He had a kunai in reverse grip. It was glowing green from the wind chakra he was pumping into it, and waited for the first person to attack. He had to wait no longer than a few seconds before one of the men swung his sword at Naruto. The blonde blocked with his kunai and grabbed the man's appendage. He yanked it harshly and pulled the man's shoulder from his socket. The masked exorcist let out a cry of agony that was silenced when Naruto used the man's body to block the strike of a sword from one of his brethren. Naruto flipped over the now dead man and landed behind another attacker's back. Naruto then lifted his hand that held the kunai backwards to where the man's neck was. He cut the man's throat open quickly and dodged the next strike of another man's sword, this sword was not bathed in a bright light like the other attacker's weapons. The shinobi weaved through attacks like an art form, 
delivering debilitating strikes with fluid, practiced motions. The exorcists were now starting to become hesitant of attacking the effective killing machine. Meanwhile on the stage, Rainair was trying to take the twilight healing ability from Asia as fast as possible. If she wanted to fight Naruto, she would need an extra edge. And what better edge is there in a fight than being able to heal yourself from almost any injury? She hoped that this would be enough, otherwise, she was going to feel the blonde's wrath with him unhindered. Naruto saw what she was trying to do and grit his teeth. Extracting that ability was sure to kill Asia. That was probably why capturing her was necessary. His guesses were proven right when he saw the life slowly fade from the girl's eyes. She was definitely still alive, but she looked slightly drained. A man tried to bring his blade down on Naruto's head from behind, but was blocked by something that was obscured in a smoke cloud that had appeared. A clone suddenly jumped out and stabbed the man in the chest. Four more clones jumped out from the huge smoke cloud. Each went to kill their own confused targets. The original Naruto jumped high and landed down next to Rainair. The fallen angel stopped what she was doing in time to dodge a slash from Naruto's kunai. He blurred next to Rainair and kicked her with enough force that, if she hadn't have blocked, would have broken multiple ribs. Instead, the kick just caused her to plummet down to the ground with a heavily bruised arm. She flashed her wings and righted herself so she didn't crash full force into the concrete floor. She was able to slow herself down enough that she landed on her feet without it hurting too much. Naruto created a clone with the silent message of getting Asia out of there. The clone instantly began cutting the girl down from the cross. The original jumped down to where Rainair had landed. The woman saw that he was coming so she sent her magic at him. Pink energy that resembled lightning. The lightning was too quick for Naruto to dodge while he was in midair, so he sent a thick layer of chakra to his small blade and put it in front of him, converting the blue chakra to his wind affinity, changing the visible blue to a heavy green within moments. The lightning-like energy smashed into the blade but couldn't break through the chakra, so it parted around the wind-like barrier to the sides of Naruto, seeking another target to strike. After the onslaught of lightning died down, Naruto landed on the ground. He stood meters from where Rainair was looking at him with a mixture of anger and fear. He brought up his blade and held it in front of him. Naruto then brought a huge amount of chakra to the blade and converted it to wind chakra. The small kunai soon looked to be a sword, with its length and thickness. The difference was it was glowing green and didn't seem to be tangible. This certain technique was very similar Donzo's vacuum blade. Naruto felt bad for using a variation of that guy's technique, but it really was useful. He used the technique not knowing that Danzo had already created something like this. Naruto's was a bit different to Danzo's however. While that bandaged asshole had to breathe his chakra out of his mouth and weave it into a sword that had great cutting power, Naruto just flooded a weapon with his chakra and molded it into a blade-like object. Since his chakra was so dense it wasn't all that hard to just pump heaps of chakra into a kunai, it was much quicker and easier. He doubted anyone else could do it however. Asuma did apparently have a variant similar to Naruto's, but that man was almost prodigious with his affinity. Even though Rainair was not familiar with what the blonde was now holding in his hand, she was still very cautious of it. It was to be expected really, it was a scary looking technique after all. Rainair steeled herself, summoning a spear of light into one of her hands and her crackling pink magic into her other. She stood her full height, ready to attack and defend at a moment's notice. Naruto crouched low, he held his wind blade in front of him. The two stared each other down for a few seconds before Naruto made his move. He pulled quite a bit of chakra into his legs and then shot at her with breakneck speeds. His body blurred and the stone at his feet exploded, sending bits of shrapnel flying behind him as his distorted form rocketed towards her. She shot her lightning towards him but it had the same outcome as the first time. So she raised her spear to block the blonde strike with his strange sword. What she didn't expect was for her trusty spear to slice in half. She jumped back and shot more lightning at the blonde. He jumped over the magic technique and sent a chakra-enhanced kick towards her. She tried to dodge, because of how much blocking his attack hurt before, but she couldn't get out of the way in time. She was sent towards the wall, but she opened up her wings, and again, slowed herself down enough for the force to become inconsequential. She didn't allow herself time to breathe, knowing that the blonde definitely wouldn't. Rainair spread her wings and created a spiral of electric magic to block any projectiles Naruto would send at her and called to her army of good little puppets. Everyone, help me attack this one. 
She had to swallow her pride if she wanted to survive. She had to get out of there. The few exorcists that were left all ran over to the original Naruto in hopes to save their commander. Rainair quickly attempted her retreat, leaving the exorcists behind to their fate as she went sailing to the exit and dropped her electric shield so she wouldn't be seen while the boy was occupied. Her hope of escape died as she saw five more identical Narutos all jump in front of the only exit. She looked back to the original, and the scene froze her in place. The original's bright, glowing red eyes were looking at her with indifference. All of her henchmen were on the ground behind him, either dead or dying. He walked towards her slowly, looking eerily calm about killing all of those people. She was trapped, between five copies of the blonde nightmare and the original, who her instincts were screaming at to run from. Yet she couldn't run, she couldn't move. Her wings stopped flapping, causing her to descend. She didn't even notice when she landed on the ground, all she could think of was the hopelessness of the situation. A clone from behind her grabbed her shoulders and pushed her to the ground, on her knees. She didn't even have enough willpower to stop him. Her eyes were glued to the sight of the frightening blonde who was walking towards her. Naruto finally stopped in front of her, he dissipated his wind sword, not needing it at the moment. He towered over her due to her kneeling and him standing at a full height in front of her, increasing how intimidating he seemed to her. His violent red eyes looked into her violet ones that were set in unbridled terror. The clone let go of her shoulders and moved away, leaving her unrestricted. Yet she didn't move, she managed to find her voice after a few seconds. Please don't kill me, she choked out. She couldn't even bring out her acts of deception when those fierce eyes were staring at her. Her request was met with a huge amount of killing intent. Her body weighed down to the floor against her will, her eyes widening to huge proportions as she was forced to swallow the bile down in her throat. And why should I listen to you? He asked. I hate killing people, it is the one thing that I truly hate with all my heart. I do it out of necessity. You forced me to kill all of these people, and you did so because of your own greed. What will make me think that you won't force me to kill again in the future? I I won't, I swear. She was completely genuine there. There was no way she wanted to experience anything like this again. She was horrified at the power this man had over her. You are a selfish, sadistic woman Rainer. Your promises mean nothing to me, and even though you don't believe you will try something like this again, your greed will force you to orchestrate another plot like this. He stated. Please, I'll do anything. She begged. She felt so degraded, so worthless in the eyes of this man. She was being forced to beg this man for another chance, which was so difficult when she was such a prideful woman. I will consider it if you answer my questions, and if you answer them honestly. He said. She nodded her head without hesitation. Were you under the orders of anyone to steal Asia's power? She looked unsure about giving Naruto this information, but she answered him. No, I was under no orders. She decided she didn't care that she was giving away sensitive information. She wanted to get through this alive. I see, so this won't lead to a war since it was under no direct orders yes. She nodded. At that, he closed his eyes, thinking. After a couple of seconds, he opened up his eyes and Rainer was relieved to see that his eye color had transformed back into the azure blue. The blue eyes made him much less intimidating than the animal-like red eyes. Thanks for cooperating, Naruto said, before driving his fingers into a pressure point on her body. She was unconscious before she hit the floor. He was glad that fallen angels had similar biology to humans, they shared some of the same pressure points and seemed. He grabbed her body and flung her over his shoulder. Naruto turned to see all of the destruction that befell the church. He didn't even feel overly tired. That was a good thing. Every time he used his chakra, it increased his stores more and more, his body growing accustomed to its use. He turned back to the stairs and left the church, popping the clones that were on the stairs. XXX. When Rias went to the church to help out her blonde friend, she expected to see a few things. But the same blonde that she and her peerage were going to save walking out of the church unscathed with a dangerous enemy on his shoulder, unconscious, was not one of those things. Naruto noticed them and looked confused for a second. He picked up his pace and walked in front of them. They all looked disbelievingly at him. He didn't pay any of their lack of believing of him being there though. What are you guys doing here? He asked, but he didn't look anywhere near as confused as them. We came to help you, Yuto responded unsurely. But weren't you guys against me coming here in the first place? We weren't just going to leave you. You're our friend, said Rias, 
like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Wow, he was not expecting that. He hadn't really given them a reason to be protective of him, but they just kept on showing him how much they cared. It was, nice. Oh uh, sorry, he didn't really know what to say, but I didn't really need help, thanks anyway. He scratched his head. He was beginning to feel uncomfortable, so he quickly changed the topic. I got Asia Chan out safely, and I captured three other fallen angels other than Rainair here. Rainair admitted to capturing Asia Chan without orders of any of her superiors. She probably wanted to keep Asia's healing ability for herself. You mean Twilight healing? Rias asked, her eyes looking thoughtful. Yeah, I think that might be the one. It must be very useful if Rainair was willing to go through so much in order to get it. He said. Where is Asia now? Rias asked. She should be coming right about now. Naruto said, and within only moments, his clone appeared with Asia in a princess carry. Everyone other than himself recoiled in shock at the startling resemblance between Naruto and the clone. Naruto looked to the group. Don't worry, one of my abilities is to replicate myself, you'll get used to it. He answered the unasked question. There are three more fallen angels near that tree over there. I won't be able to carry everyone, so do you guys mind helping out? He didn't expect Kaneko to silently walk over to the tree that Naruto gestured to and pick up all three tied up fallen angels with one of her arms. He knew she was strong, but it was weird to see such a small girl carry three people with ease. I'll explain everything to you guys once we get back to the clubhouse. He began to walk out of the courtyard, and the group followed him silently. And that's basically it. Everyone stared at Naruto like he grew a second head from the blonde's retelling of what went on earlier in the night. They were all back in the occult research room again. Naruto had his jacket off in the stuffy room and his dark school shirt's sleeves rolled up to his elbows, untucked as usual. Each member had all taken their respectable places, Rias sitting at the head of the room with the ornate table in front of her, Akino who was standing next to her, Kiba at the corner of the room with his back against the wall, Kaneko on the couch and finally Naruto who was sitting on the opposite end of the couch that the cat-like girl was on. You're kidding right? Kiba asked incredulously, his thin brows contorting in disbelief. No, why the hell would I lie about any of that? Naruto retorted. Well, you did have trouble with a single exorcist at the house when Asia was taken, so saying you were able to take on an entire army of them as well as four fallen angels is unbelievable. Rias pointed out. I was holding back that fight. And he caught me with a trick. So you were also holding back the first fight you had with Rainair as well. I was weakened at that stage. When Naruto noticed Rias' unimpressed face he sighed, you don't have to believe me, because it's all done now. I did it all without your help. Naruto said slightly bitterly. He didn't care that much that they all appeared later than they should have, he was able to take care of it all on his own. And besides that, he could also hide some of his abilities from them. It wasn't that he cared a lot about them knowing his abilities, but more out of habit of hiding them. Even though he flaunted his abilities to his friends back home, he still had to make sure his enemies or potential enemies wouldn't know enough to give them the upper hand. It was surprising how quick ninjas developed trust issues. It was hard not to be at least a little bitter though. Even though they had good intentions it fell flat, since they would have left Asia to her death. That kind of mentality, even with the consequences that would befall them, spat in the face of Naruto's moral code. The fact that they did turn up softened his spite, but not by much since if it wasn't for him, Asia would have died. Where are the exorcists now? Rias asked. Dead, was Naruto's unceremonious response. Everyone looked surprised but he paid it no mind. He was no stranger to death, and the exorcists had to go. He would have felt more guilt from the lives he had taken if he didn't know that each one was heavily brainwashed. Every single one of them had a characteristic dullness to their eyes, and were willing to follow Rainer's every command each of them not hesitating in jumping to their deaths. Naruto wasn't sure how to fix one's mind, his genjutsu was sorely lacking not only for his huge chakra reserves after all. He didn't find psychology interesting enough to learn the mechanics of it all and implement it to training. That wasn't the only reason that he didn't care all that much though. It was the fact that the devils would have killed them all anyway. All of the exorcists were working under fallen angels who were doing a job that could possibly lead to war, so the devils, who all saw exorcists as enemies, would have no trouble killing the exorcists and destroying the light weapons after doing something so against the treaty the three factions made. If anything, he saved them from a slower death by the hands of Rias' family, or whoever would deal out the punishment. So then, 
Why would you leave them alive? Rias asked, gesturing to the unconscious forms of the fallen angels who were tied up. He shrugged. Truthfully it was because he didn't want to get any more involved with the devil's issues than he already was, but he didn't care to explain that to the peerage. He guessed that he was already caught up in it just by capturing them but there was something about killing all four of them that just cemented it. Bushu. We should kill them now. Akino said with a sort of coldness that actually shocked Naruto slightly. He looked to her to see that she was glaring death at the fallen angels who were tied up on the floor. There was obviously something deeper than just dislike towards those four in particular, if they are left alive much longer they could prove to be a threat later. I would appreciate it if you didn't do that. A voice called calmly. Everyone in the room turned to the voice quickly and stood up in defensive positions. All but Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of the man. Naruto's eyes just narrowed to assess the newcomer and potential threat. And how high that potential was. Now that the man wasn't bothering to hide his presence Naruto could feel the man's power leaking from his body, probably unintentionally. The man in front of him was dangerous. The man was quite tall, a bit taller than Naruto. He had black hair with golden bangs, and a black goatee. He had a grey kimono-like garb on as well. The man's eyes held a violet, reddish tint, while his face sported a confident half-smile on. When he saw Naruto looking at him his smile grew just a little more. A Azazel Sama, came the startled gasp of Rias. The man in question just continued to stare at Naruto which was beginning to unsettle him. After a few more seconds of staring he finally spoke. Ah, Rias chan how have you been? He addressed her, but his eyes were still firmly locked on Naruto. The blonde shifted his body so that it would be easy to engage in combat if Azazel came at him. What are you doing here? This goes against the agreement that the Grimoires have with you. Rias asked heatedly. Oh no, I cleared that all up with Sirzex. I have been in Kuo for a few weeks now. He finally turned to her. I had to see to my subordinates that they receive proper punishment. You knew about what these four were doing and you didn't even stop them. Rias glared. Naruto turned to everyone that wasn't currently in an argument and saw that they were all content to let Rias have a verbal duke out with the odd man who had just randomly appeared. Maybe they weren't arguing because it wasn't their place to because they weren't of high blood, or perhaps they were just dependent on Rias. He wasn't sure. If the man merited a, Sama, from the sister of the leader of the underworld then he must be either prestigious or extremely powerful. Most likely both. He could see the one that seemed the most bothered by his presence was Akino. She was glaring at him, but Naruto was sure it was for something not related to why Azazel came now specifically. In fact she had the same expression as when she looked at Rainer and the rest of the fallen angels. Well, I only found out the night they got taken out. By one boy no less. You followed my servants. Rias grit her teeth. Just one. Azazel's eyes flickered to Naruto. Naruto wasn't sure whether to bristle in anger at the man or slap himself in the face. How could he not have noticed that he was being followed? And by the way that Azazel was looking at him, he saw each of the fights, or at least gained info on what transpired. Meaning Azazel knew some of his abilities. With your lax attitude, I'm afraid that even someone of your stature won't be able to control their subordinates well enough. They have each gone against the agreement and we both know what the punishment for that is. Rias glared balefully. Azazel chuckled in response. That's why I've come to strike up a deal with you. He said coolly. Walking over to his unconscious brethren, he tapped the unconscious Rainer on the forehead. I am offering three fallen angels to you. I will take one and use him or her to show that even though I do love my people, I am not completely lenient to them if they do something as stupid as what these four did. Of course, you can take all four, perhaps we could leave it at a public beating. Having four servants who each have the capabilities to wield light weapons is a huge boon in the upcoming raiding games after all. He pointed out. I am confident in my peerage, I don't need any of your fallen angels, especially if it is just to silence what happened. Rias shot back. I wasn't going to ask you to keep what happened between us at all. They are just compensation, they caused you quite a bit of trouble after all. And we both know that you need the extra help. He said with a smirk. Rias glared again. At this point Naruto was at a loss. Why would she need more servants? He thought that they were just used for small jobs, but maybe there was something deeper going on here. You said that you only followed one of my servants, so why do you know that much? Rias grit out. I keep up to date on everything Rias, remember that. He smirked and tapped his head with his index finger, what I am offering is valuable. 
I know there is only one way for you to truly decline riser and you know what it is as well. He turned away from Ria's angry face to Naruto's cautious one, and Boy Wonder won't be able to help. Naruto held back a growl from the irritating nickname that was obviously directed at him. Rias looked like she was about to speak, then she closed her mouth and processed the information. After almost a full minute of tense silence, Rias sent an apologetic look to Akino. Give me some time to think about it. You have to answer tonight Rias, I'm a busy man. Azazel said. Somehow I doubt that. Rias commented dryly. Azazel laughed at her reply but still responded. Either way, you still have to tell me tonight. He said casually. Another silence dragged out before Rias sighed in defeat. She gave Akino another look before responding. I, she sighed again, I accept. Great. The man suddenly walked towards Naruto and put his hand into a pocket inside his kimono. The blonde prepared for a weapon to appear, instead there was a piece of paper that was in his hand as Azazel stretched his arm out to Naruto. Hey blondie, nice work with the bottom feeders. Come to this room soon, we have a lot to discuss. While you're there we should have a drink, nay. Naruto nodded unsurely, not hiding his twitching eye at yet another nickname, especially since the man in front of him was more or less blonde himself, and took the card from his hand. It's been a wonderful reunion Rias chan I'll be seeing you soon. A golden light shined through the room originating at the man's feet, forming into a pentagram. With a salute, the strange individual disappeared from view. There was a moment of silence that hung in the air for a second before being broken. Who the hell was that? Naruto asked incredulously. Azazel, the former governor general of the Fallen Angels. Rias stated with a glare set in place where the man made his exit. Taking in the information, Naruto turned the piece of paper Azazel gave to him and his brow furrowed when he saw the number 305 staring back at him. Was that guy, in the same hotel he was staying in? If he was then the man likely had something to do with his living arrangements. The ninja scowled as he crumpled it up. There were too many mysteries popping up in one night. First the vague conversation that fallen angel guy had with Rias, Akino's reaction to the man and his subordinates, and finally the man giving him the room number which also had to mean something. It was all starting to make his already exhausted mind whirl like a spinning top. I've had enough, I'm gonna go get some rest. It's been a hell of a long day. Naruto said as he grabbed Asia and put her on his back. She adjusted herself in her sleep with a cute snore. I'll take Asia Chan with me back to my place where she'll be safe. Afterwards he had something else he wanted to do. Wait, Naruto-kun. The blonde turned and she saw the curiousness in the large, blue stratospheres that were his eyes, I don't like the way Azazel-sama looked at you. He's a dangerous man, just, be careful okay. Yeah, sure thing, he said with one of his usual grins, albeit a little dim than what it usually was. He looked troubled she realized. She felt even more distant than usual with the enigmatic teenager. Before she knew it he was gone, leaving her blinking at his quick departure. She quickly turned to the still remaining members of the room. You guys go get some rest as well, I'll need all of you prepared for tomorrow in case any of our guests try to make a quick escape. Hi, Bushu. They said in unison, leaving without another world. Rias looked to Akino's back in concern but the Lightning Queen didn't turn back. When the doors finally closed towards their retreating backs, Rias put her face in her hands with a heavy sigh. Forgive me, Akino. XXX. Naruto looked uneasily at the door in front of him. His back now unhindered by Asia's weight, with her safely resting in his room. His knuckles hovered in front of the heavy wooden door in front of him, next to the door at the room number. 305. Another second of hesitation passed before he gave three solid knocks. Keeping his hands from instinctively going into his pockets in case he had to fight the guy on the other side. His body tensed when he heard the door give a click sound from the other side, followed by the door sliding open to reveal the man that had Naruto's alarm bells ringing in his brain, making his body again shift into a more ready position. Azazel was still in the same kimono from the minutes earlier, but he now had a glass of scotch that he was swishing in his hand, that same confident half smile still in place. Took you less time than I was expecting. He opened the door some more, I got more glasses inside if you'd like, always better to share a drink than drink alone. Azazel laughed. Naruto crossed his arms. Sorry, I was taught never to go into hotel rooms with strangers. Especially creepy older guys, Naruto said. Azazel unexpectedly let out a boisterous laugh and clapped Naruto on the back before the blonde could even react, 
making him stumble inside the room against his will. I like you kid. He yelled with a drunken swish of his glass, not even acknowledging the boy's pained wheeze. Azazel walked around him into a large kitchen that had an indescribable number of liquor bottles, all of varying sizes. He pulled one of the many bottles and inspected it for a second before grabbing out a glass for his new guest, who was still giving out a few coughs of discomfort from his aching back. Damn this guy hit hard. What was it with people not knowing their own strength in this world? How does a 1965 Glenfiddich bottle of whiskey scotch sound? I paid 3 million yen for this baby. One of the only bottles in the world you know. The man asked as he opened the bottle and poured the expensive liquid into both glasses, making sure to ration it out. He walked over to Naruto and handed him a glass. Naruto finally straightened his form and took the glass out of his hand, put off by the man's easy-going personality. He thought this would be a meeting with a lot more, tension. He inspected both the glass and the substance contained within thoroughly. Azazel grinned. I'm not one for poison, or fighting really. I'm more of a talker. He stated as he moved to sit down on one of the couches in the middle of the room. Once he was comfortable he took a sip of his glass and smacked his lips together in satisfaction, worth the 50 years of waiting. Azazel exclaimed with a content smile. He looked to the boy, sit. I'll stand. Naruto replied with a deadpan stare, setting the glass down on a table. Suit yourself. Azazel said easily, I'm guessing you're wondering why I asked for this little meeting. He said, getting a stiff nod from the still cautious boy, well, I just wanted to commend you on your performance tonight. Naruto's jaw flexed, I have to say, you're even more interesting than I thought you would be when I found you on that park floor a few weeks ago. Azazel smiled, taking another sip of the priceless liquor, a shinobi warrior from another dimension, sounds like the theme of a cheesy movie, honestly. He laughed, how do you, know all that, I think you are underestimating how popular you are. The shinobi narrowed his eyes at Azazel's statement. I thought only the Grimori family knew anything about me. Naruto stated. He saw the man's grin widen. Then you're dumber than you look, kid. The man chuckled. He got a dangerous growl in reply. You didn't think one of the Satans of the underworld would keep such a thing to himself and his family did you? All of the Satans know of you. Though, the four Satans want to keep your presence on the down low, so your anonymity is more or less safe for now. Deciding the man in front of him really wasn't going to attack, Naruto slid his hands into his pockets, but still kept his distance. How many people know about me? Naruto asked with a grimace. Azazel looked at his hand as he counted with his fingers. Six pillar families of the remaining 33 existing, not including the four Satans themselves, Azazel shrugged, that's only the figure heads of each Hakult to fight them off if their numbers were great enough. As soon as he had his power fully restored, which would take no longer than a week, he would be glad for a fight though. Sizing the governor in front of him up, he decided he'd be able to put up a good fight against him, if not beat him outright. He doubted Azazel had any particularly tricky magic with all the power he unconsciously put out, while Naruto could just use his more diverse jutsu against him. Though, Naruto hadn't seen much magic being used at all, so he decided he wouldn't judge based on speculation. You're the one who is paying for my stay here, aren't you? Naruto ventured. If what he said before was true about Azazel was the one who first found Naruto, which would make him the most likely candidate. That's correct. Azazel nodded, leaning his back deeper into his comfortable looking couch, I hope you like the living arrangements. The grinning man said, pouring himself another glass, I asked you to go to school so you could meet with Rias Chan, I knew it wouldn't take long for that girl to find you. Why would you want me to meet up with her? Naruto asked, curious despite himself. Why? protection of course. The Grimori family is one of the strongest families in the underworld, and you'll need some protecting. You're quite the VIP here, kid. You're lucky I'm the one that found you, there are a lot of dangerous people here after all. He whispered conspiratorially, before bursting out in boisterous laughter. Naruto sweat dropped, not knowing if the man was drunk or just weird. Nothing I can't handle, Naruto shrugged, picking up the glass off the table again. After another glance, he threw it back, not seeing any abnormalities with it. His face scrunched up at the smoky taste that assaulted his mouth, ugh. That's the spirit. Azazel cheered in approval, grabbing the bottle and pouring his new friend another drink, which Naruto reluctantly accepted, now that we got all that out of the way, how about we talk about something else? Azazel suddenly leaned his head forward with his grin in place, how do you like s? Azazel asked. 
Naruto blinked. That wasn't what he was expecting. They're awesome. Why? The multicolored haired man shook his head. No, no, you can't just leave it at that. Azazel clicked his tongue in disapproval, wagging his finger. What are your preferences? Bigger, smaller, dark S, or pink? Do you prefer squeezing them or sucking them? Do you like how they bounce or how they jiggle? The man listed off. Naruto tilted his head, looking at him disbelievingly. How did the conversation turn into this so quickly? Regardless of how it did, the man was still waiting on his answer. Uh, big. Naruto responded, brow furrowing in concern for the man's mentality. Azazel stroked his goatee, contemplating. Hmm, we have similar tastes it seems. Though next time you should be a bit more descriptive. Azazel smirked, raising his glass to Naruto's, we'll get along just fine. Naruto clinked his glass against Azazel's, finally letting out a laugh at the absurdity the night turned out to be. Weirdly enough, the guy reminded Naruto of Aero Senen, from the drinking and mannerisms to the obsession of. In another life they would have gotten along frighteningly well, another question. Is it boob related? Naruto asked, throwing back another glass, grimacing in disgust as the strong drink touched his tongue. The man smiled. You catch on quick, he said, pouring Naruto another glass. Naruto looked at the newly refilled glass and then at the grinning man. This was going to be a long night. XXX. Brilliant, bright green eyes opened slowly, refracting the light from the white ceiling above her. Asia let out a cute yawn and closed her eyes again, not willing to get up yet. Getting comfortable again, she attempted to sleep but her attention was immediately drawn to light snoring coming from next to her. She opened her eyes and turned over to inspect who the noise was coming from. Her eyes widened when she saw a shirtless Naruto, lying right next to her with his eyes closed, blissfully unaware of his surroundings. She turned a brilliant shade of red as she kept looking at him, then down at his shirtless form. She felt as if steam were shooting out of her ears as she realized what she was doing. Almost as if he sensed her watching him in his sleep, he yawned and opened his eyes, making her squeak in surprise. He sat up and stretched his arms, popping his back in a few places and finally bringing his hand to his head, already feeling the night of drinking take its toll. Naruto turned his bloodshot eyes over to the tomato-faced girl currently staring at him. Good morning. He grimaced, running a hair through his messier-than-usual hair, how ya feeling? Um, f fine. She stammered, doing her best not to look him in the eyes, Naruto-san, did you perhaps, s save me last night? She asked, making sure it wasn't all just a crazy dream. Yeah, Naruto responded half-heartedly, ripping the sheets off of him and jumping off the bed. He grabbed a loose-fitting red singlet from the ground. You were in trouble so I came and helped out. He said tiredly, tugging the newly acquired clothing on. T thank you, Naruto, Kun. She looked to her savior, her eyes shining with awe, even as he scratched his ass and yawned. Naruto Kun was so, amazing. Hey Asia Chan, you sure you're feeling all right? You're all red, Naruto said, pointing to her face. I'm fine, she said embarrassedly trying to hide her face from the fellow blonde, who had his head tilted to the side. Okay, if you say so. He shrugged, come out whenever. He said, throwing her a plain white t-shirt and some baggy gray sweatpants. First you might want to chuck on something to wear. Asia looked at him, confused, then looked down at herself. She felt her cheeks burn even hotter when she found that her once modest nun outfit was almost completely shredded, leaving her white bra exposed. Your clothes got dirty and shredded up from last night. Naruto explained, not noticing her emotional predicament, instead looking at the clock on the bedside table. He cursed, crap, late again. Get dressed quick, Asia Chan. I gotta get to the club, and you have to come with. He said as he searched quickly for a uniform he could wear. Not finding one that wasn't ruined from his last few battles, he grabbed a dark zip-up hoodie and some jeans, deciding that school conduct could suck it. He ducked out of the room, see you out the door. He said, leaving the more than a little embarrassed girl to her privacy. XXX. Naruto brought his hand over his face to shade his eyes from the overbearing sun as he speed walked to the school grounds, wishing he brought some glasses. Asia followed him timidly, having a difficult time keeping up because she had to stop every few seconds to pull up the large pants around her waist. He turned around and smiled sheepishly. Sorry, I don't have anything your size he said, rubbing the back of his neck. And no, it's no problem, Naruto-kun. Asia assured. She poked her fingers together, 
Um, uh, Naruto-kun. If you don't mind me asking, where are we going? My school, to that big-ass building over there. Naruto pointed to the bright educational behemoth that sat a block ahead, I have to get back to Rias to deal with the assholes that captured you before, and I want you to be with me. You want me to be with you? Asia asked. She felt her rosy cheeks stretch into a shy smile, are really? Yeah, I couldn't protect you before but I'll make sure nothing will happen to you again, okay? Asia felt lightness in her chest and she brought a hand to her heart. She felt weird, but, happy. She didn't trust her voice, so she just nodded. They walked through the large metal gates. She couldn't help but notice all the stairs that were sent their way, curious eyes all looking at her. She walked a little closer to Naruto and held onto the fabric of his jacket, not used to all the attention. Naruto just ignored it. The blonde shinobi navigated them both through the school courtyard to a much older looking building. He opened the door and stepped inside, Asia still holding onto his clothes. Eventually they reached a door that Naruto stopped at. He gave a solid knock and cracked it open, finding Rias, Kiba and Kaneko sitting in the room, Akino surprisingly absent. Naruto's eyes narrowed when he found all of the fallen angel's eyes turned to him. He stepped in front of Asia protectively and kept his eyes on them all as he walked further into the room. Hey, you're the kid from earlier. Ironically, this came from the young-looking Lolita who he beat last night. You impertinent, blonde bastard. This lovely comment came from the glaring Donesik, pray I don't get out of these damned restraints, boy. He spat contemptuously. Be quiet, both of you. Rainair hissed, surprising the two and subsequently Naruto. He focused on her and noted the bead of sweat that trailed down her face. He couldn't hold back a gratifying smirk. Wait, Rainair, why would you want us to be quiet? Aren't you mad at that damnable team? Warner asked, unwilling to act amenable to her superior's uncharacteristic demand. I said silence. Rainair responded harshly, making Warner recoil, do not question my orders. She had seen what the boy was capable of, and his superior combat prowess, even with the sizable age difference. Her subordinates apparently had not learned their lesson. She wasn't going to fall with them if they were too foolish to realize their plight. Hey, thanks Rainair. You might not be as bad as I thought. Naruto exclaimed, giving her a patronizing pat on the head. Rainair's eye twitched. How dare why? Donesik started. It's Donesik. Yeah, sorry, I left you out. He moved his hand to pat the man on the head, which was not currently sporting his fedora. The man growled out something incomprehensible and tried to bite one of the blonde's fingers off. The boy drew back his hand too quickly however, much to the man's dismay. Yeesh, would it kill you to take a shower? Your hair's seriously greasy without that hat on. Naruto said, wiping off his hand on his pants. Mittelt let out a snort of laughter, as did Kiba from the other side of the room. You insufferable helmet. A hell what? Naruto asked, perplexed by the new word. As entertaining as this is, could you please stop messing around with the fallen angels, Naruto-kun? Rias asked, giggling into her hand. His smile dropped a tiny bit when he heard her voice. Yeah, they're all yours. He nodded, lacking all previous enthusiasm. Rias frowned. Yes, good. Well, Rias looked at the group still tied to the ground, you are probably wondering why we haven't killed you all yet. I thought it obvious, actually. The Grimori family is rather weak, after all. Rainair snarled, showing her contempt quite clearly. Rias ignored the comment. Your master has so kindly given you a chance of redemption, even though you have broken multiple laws of the treaty instated by the three factions. You will all be allowed to live, under one condition. That you serve me as members of my peerage. Bo, to you, Donesik laughed at the thought, I will not bow to the whims of a mere child. Then you will be hung. She retorted flatly. She let the comment sit in their minds. I would suggest you not anger me, because as of right now, your lives are in my hands. Listen, girl, Rainair spat, you are a hundred years too early to be demanding anything from us. Regardless, you will answer to me, or you will be executed. Rias responded seriously, silencing the fallen angel. Rainair swallowed. The others were also noticeably uncomfortable. What would you have us do under your authority? Rainair asked. She looked nauseated just saying it. Rias smiled. XXX. This sucks. Mittelt whined after handing out yet another flyer. The first chance I get I'll kill that girl. And the blonde kid as well. Warner said, doing her best to ignore the ever-growing groups of ogling guys. 
Mittelt pouted. At least you have admirers. Why can't I have any crowding men? Maybe because you look like a middle schooler. Warner replied flippantly. Besides, why would you want a bunch of buffoons drooling over you? Maybe because you've already gotten rid of most of these damn flyers. Mittelt cried, tears comically streaming down her face. You don't even have to try. She accused. Hum. She replied, shutting the girls whining out of her head. Meanie. The girl pouted. I wonder if Don and Ray Chan are doing any better. XXX. Burn them faster. Rainair said from a branch she was sitting on, reading. You could help, woman. Donaseek yelled, dark electricity streaming from his fingers, there's over a thousand of these things, and it's definitely not normal paper. He had to spend at least ten seconds of constant destructive energy on a single piece before it burst. He had around eight hundred to go. I could. She agreed, before flipping another page in her book. Bitch. XXX. I gotta say Rius, that was hilarious. Naruto laughed, seriously. The looks on their faces when they got their first assignment was priceless. He may not have held her in the highest regard at the moment, but he had to give credit where credit was due. It was funny. Kaneko agreed monotonously, one of her rare smiles resting on her face. Even though she was cautious of Naruto after him admitting he used natural chakra, she couldn't help but gravitate towards the boy's sanguine personality. I'm glad you both think so. Rias smiled. Though, Naruto, could you tell me why you're on the roof? The boy in question grinned. Just stretching my chakra muscles a little bit, you know. He responded, sitting cross-legged on the room's ceiling. Asia hadn't stopped staring at him, performing a seemingly impossible task, mouth wide open in befuddlement. Rias shook her head. The boy never ceased to surprise her. Of course he would have yet another ability that she had never seen before. She looked at the slack-jawed Asia. Oh, how rude of me, I was so caught up in business I forgot to introduce myself. We have never been properly acquainted, have we, Asia Chan? I am Rias Gramori. Asia came back to reality with a start and looked to the angelic voice greeting her. Oh oh, yes, it's very nice to meet you, Rias San. She bowed low. Rias waved the girl off. No need for formalities, Asia Chan. Rias walked over to Asia and cupped the startled girl's face with her hand. I must apologize, Asia Chan. If it weren't for Naruto, we may have ended up leaving you to the fallen angels. To make up for that, I will do whatever you ask of me, as well as my full ability to protect you. From now on, think of this club and I as your family. Rias said, caressing the girl's cheek with her thumb. Asia's eyes went wide, she'd never had a family before. All she could do was nod as she looked at her newest role model in the face. T there's no need to apologize, Rias San. I'm sure you did the best you could. Asia replied earnestly, despite the timidness in her voice. Rias' radiant smile widened. You're such a good girl. Naruto dropped from the ceiling and landed next to the girls. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, but you still haven't introduced the rest of the club. Naruto pointed out. Oh. Of course, it dawned on him that it was due to the fact that he couldn't recall saying much of anything to the two that sat in the room with him, none in Kaneko's case. Naruto stretched a little before dropping roughly on the couch opposite of Kaneko. It really didn't take a lot for them to give in. Naruto remarked, throwing his hands to the back of his head and leaning back. He looked specifically at Kaneko as he said it, causing the usually emotionless girl to squirm lightly in discomfort. She gave a tight nod. Naruto frowned. Puzzled, you know, we haven't really talked before Kaneko-chan. Yes. Naruto sweat dropped at the concise answer. Do you, like being a rook for Rias? Yes. She replied again with a nod. You a fan of music? A silent nod was his answer. He ran a hand down his face. You're not great at this whole conversation thing, huh? You'll have to forgive Kaneko-chan here. Kiba stepped into view, putting a hand on the cute girl's head. She's not very talkative, you see. He laughed. Yeah, I can see that. Naruto said, picking out his ear with his pinky finger. Well, what about you? What about me? You're a ninja, right? No offense, but you don't really seem like the ninja type. Kiba laughed. What's a ninja supposed to be like? Naruto asked, putting his feet on the table in front of them. Kaneko grabbed the plate of snacks resting on the table and held it close to her protectively. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, sorry. I'm not sure. Silent. Wears all black and stalks the knight, ready to assassinate people at the drop of a hat. You know, 
That kind of stuff. Naruto's face scrunched. That's the Anbu type stuff. I'll stick to orange. Thank you very much. Naruto scratched his cheek and looked up in thought. I'm not really the stealthy sort of ninja. I'm more of the kick ass, front of the line type. I wasn't aware that there was that kind of ninja. Hiba remarked. Naruto grinned. Of course there is. All the big name shinobi are the powerhouses. Naruto pointed both of his thumbs to his chest proudly, and you're looking at one of the most revered, badass names in the history of the elemental nations. The hero of Konoha, at your service. What? He was allowed to gloat. He earned that title damn it, and hell if he wasn't going to use it every chance he got. Hiba chuckled in amusement. Oh, and how did you win that title? Hiba asked. Saved the village from some dude people claimed was a god, no biggie. The way he said it made it seem like, it was in fact, quite a biggie, the bastard was tough as anything, though. Second toughest guy I've ever fought. You're just full of stories, aren't you? True stories. Why did no one ever believe him? I believe you. Naruto blinked. Seriously. Yes, Kiba said seriously with a nod. I had my doubts about your little tale last night, but after seeing how that Rainair woman reacted to you, I trust your word. Besides, you seem like the truthful type. Even if your stories are a bit out there. Huh. Cool. Naruto leaned back again with a grin. My stories are so out there because I'm so badass, Dadbeo. Dad huh. Never mind. Another silence fell upon the room, a much more comfortable one. Naruto looked to the roof and sighed, not an exasperated one like he had started doing since coming to this strange new world, but a peaceful one. Even if he couldn't get back home now, he would get there for sure. And while he figured out a way, he could at least stay here with some cool people. Naruto's head snapped to Kiba as he realized something. Hold up. What happened to that Issei guy? XXX. I'm telling you, my girlfriend really did turn into a big titted babe with wings and tried to kill me. Issei screamed for what felt like the millionth time to the doctor in front of him. The man pushed up his glasses. Yes, of course. But what do you think the big titted babe with wings represents? No, she doesn't represent anything. She almost killed me for God's sake. The doctor nodded, scribbling down something on his notepad. And how does that make you feel? Arg, Wasn't that amazing? Naruto-kun. Not really. Naruto yawned not sharing in Asia's enthusiasm. He quickly folded his arms on the desk in front of him and let his head fall into the makeshift pillow. Seriously, how could she think of economics class as amazing? Granted, this was the first class she'd ever had in her life, but surely she saw how utterly mundane it was, right? He could barely stay awake from all the useless information he was doing his best to push out of his head. He didn't exactly care about grades, after all. He looked over to Rainer's transformed body to see how the dark girl was faring. The woman who currently looked like a girl, sat in the corner of the room, staring off into space. The girl's, school name, was Yuma. And Yuma did not look amused. For a century-year-old woman to start going to high school again, if she had even attended before, must have been boring beyond comprehension. The woman looked at him, catching his stare, and hastily looked away. He frowned. Her fear may have been amusing in a dark kind of way before, but now it was just starting to get on his nerves. He wasn't used to being feared, and he didn't want to get used to it. He was a nice guy, damn it. Why hadn't she realized that? He slammed his head into his arms again. That attitude won't do, Naruto-chan. He groaned at the familiar voice. Aika Kuriyu, a second-year student at Kuo Academy in Naruto's class. The girl had brown hair wore glasses, and was perhaps the most perverted girl in school. For some reason, she had a keen interest in Naruto's social life, and loved to tease the poor boy every chance she got. She looked at Naruto with a gleam in her chocolate brown eyes, don't drag your innocent little sister down just because you're a good-for-nothing degenerate. He waved her off. Yeah, and like you're the role model of the year. He took his head off his arms to give her a deadpan stare. Rias had somehow admitted Asia into the school within a couple of days, under the guise of his little sister. When he asked her about it, Rias replied that it would get rid of any curiousness of why he would be so protective of the girl. Granted, he was a little more protective of the girl than what would be considered normal between friends, but that was only because of what the girl went through. He thought the redhead had just been exaggerating how much protecting she would need, these were, after all, high school students. That was until she entered the class and he saw the faces of every guy that looked at her. Now, 
He was not the jealous type, and he had no real feelings for the girl, but it irked him like nothing else when he thought about what they would do and how they would undoubtedly capitalize on her innocence for their own sick goals. He felt disgusted just at the thought. She had the mentality of a nine-year-old girl at Sunday school, for crying out loud. No way was he going to let anyone with motivations like that get close to her. So cruel. The bespectacled girl pouted, but Naruto-chan, aren't you worried for your sister's well-being? She's getting rather popular. Naruto looked over and saw that girls and boys alike were crowding around her, all vying for her attention. He blinked. He looked away for a second, how did she get that big of a group talking to her so quickly? Before the boy could walk over and make sure to keep an eye on her, he heard cries coming from outside the classroom, followed by a distressed call. Have you seen that Uzumaki guy? Blonde hair, weird-looking scars on his cheeks. Anyone? Naruto scratched his head at the distraught voice. He knew that voice from somewhere, but he just couldn't place it. Just then, the door burst open, revealing a stressed-looking, brunette boy. Naruto recognized his face immediately. Issei. Matsuda and Motohama cried from their place in the windows of the classroom, the boys in the best place they could get a look at Asia-sama, where the hell have you been? We haven't seen you in like a week. Matsuda continued. Issei ignored his friends, making a beeline right for the unanimous shinobi. Naruto. Thank God. The boy practically wept. He leapt to his savior and grabbed onto his clothes, clinging to them like a leech, you believe me, don't you? Yuma-chan turned into an angel chick and tried to kill me. You were there, weren't you? You saved me, didn't you? Naruto did his best to calm the pervert down so he could get a word in and maybe stop getting jostled around. Issei. Calm. Naruto said, removing the boy's tight hold on his clothes. Naruto looked around the room, seeing all eyes were on him. Issei didn't even notice. Please, Naruto-san. No, Naruto-sama. Issei got to his knees and held one of Naruto's legs in a deadlock, I'm not crazy, right? Naruto looked uncomfortable from the boy's look of utter hopelessness. Uh, no, you're not crazy. Issei jumped in joy and fist pumped to the air. Yes, finally, someone. He stopped his impromptu celebration when he saw the girl of his dreams, nightmares looking at him with an irritated glare. He looked taken aback before leaping over Naruto's table with an effeminate squeak, hiding behind Naruto like a protective shield. Everyone who wasn't on the ground laughing from the unexpectedly girly reaction looked at the girl that caused said reaction, without even lifting a finger. Rainair had already schooled her earlier volatile facial expression to innocent curiosity within a second. Damn, the girl was a good actor. It's her. The boy screamed painfully into Naruto's ear, making him wince, Naruto, quick. Use your crazy ninja moves on her. What ninja moves you talking about? Naruto smirked, not being able to resist. His prankster side would not allow him to leave this golden opportunity without milking it at least a little. Plus, he could get some payback for the ringing ear Issei inflicted. Issei's head swiveled to him, eyes widening in horror. Not you too. You're supposed to be the good guy here. Issei whined pitifully. Naruto bit back his laughter and looked to the poor boy, unrelenting. Come on, Issei. Are you really that scared of Yuma-chan, over there? She's harmless. He smirked at Rainair seeing a comically large tick mark form above her temple. The boy nodded frantically without hesitation. Even though she's why, she's the devil incarnate. He pointed to the unsuspecting looking girl. His body shook like a leaf in the wind when he saw a wicked smile crawl up her face, unseen by all of their classmates, as they had their attention on the paling boy. Yuma, quickly wiped the vicious grin off of her face, and feigned innocence. Who are you again? She asked, putting a finger to her full pink lips, her violet eyes open wide in question. Normally, Issei would have been foaming out the mouth from the level 10 cuteness the girl displayed. Instead, however, he leapt backwards to the ground with another womanly shriek. Why you, you truly are a dangerous enemy. Using that adorable aura like that is playing dirty. He pointed to her again, getting up and striking a heroic pose, acting as if he didn't just fall down to the ground from the words of a 16-year-old girl, mark my words, Yuma Akuma. I'll show the world just how evil you really are, he declared boldly, before making a mad dash outside, obviously not able to take the girl's terrifying presence any longer. There was an awkward second where complete silence dominated the room, before 90% of the class burst out in laughter, the other 10% all gathered around the beautiful Yuma and crowded around the girl, asking if she was alright. They were all guys, 
and each tried to cop a feel, acting as if they were checking for bruises. The girl's mushy pseudo-personality cracked for a second as she gave each of them a baleful lower. Naruto himself wiped a tear from his eye after his laughing fit ended. He stood up, ignoring his hurting sides. Okay, that was fun. But I should probably go talk to the guy. He said to himself, grabbing his empty backpack. He threw all of his books out shortly after acquiring them, from the top strap and flinging it onto his right shoulder. Opening the sliding door, he stepped out and found the boy he was looking for instantly, him being right outside the door. He stared curiously as he saw a girl with glasses and a bob haircut conversing with the debauched teenager. From what he heard, most girls wouldn't walk within a 10-foot radius of the boy unless they had to, in fear of being defiled or something of the sort. After an abrupt conversation that Naruto didn't quite catch, Issei walked away with them, looking as lost as Naruto felt. The blonde shrugged his shoulders and walked away, pushing the boy out of his mind. The girl didn't seem to have ill intentions, and it wasn't Naruto's problem anyway. XXX. Sona recruited Hyodo kun into her peerage. Rias asked incredulously, why? I'm unsure for now, Bushu. Akino's voice was tight, unlike the smooth, strangely sensual inflection it usually held. Naruto was not the only one that wasn't happy with the occult club president at this time, it seemed. Akino had also seemed distant the past few days, no doubt because of the club's recent new recruits. Rias bit her lip. Sona doesn't do anything unless it's for a reason. Rias commented airily, perhaps Hyodo kun has a sacred gear of some sort. Perhaps, Akino said, not seeming like she wanted to be in the room at all. Rias let out a sad sigh. Akino, you know I didn't want to accept Azazel-sama's offer, but what other choice do I have? Rias asked, a pained expression on her face, you're the only person I trust with the information. You know that I may very well need to protect myself when I turn down the offer. She didn't even want to say it directly. The thought of being betrothed by that disgusting man made her sick. You know why I hate those monsters you let into our family. Yet, you let them in anyway. Don't you have any trust in us? Of course I do. The Grimori heiress stood, slamming her hands on the table to show her conviction in the statement, I'm sorry if I am not showing it. She said with a softer voice, I have the utmost faith in my servants, including you. But you have to understand how much pressure I'm under. This is the rest of my life we're talking about. Akino looked away. Seeing her master in pain hurt her more than she was willing to admit, even if she was angry at her. It's not on, you really should learn to control your servants a bit better. And you should learn to control your tongue a bit better. Rias scowled, you will not provoke Akino any further, am I understood? Hi, hi, Mittelt waved her hand in front her face, sheesh, what's with all the animosity? I do a task for you and all I get is insults in return. You seem to have forgotten your place here already. Even though you are part of the peerage, you are not a part of our family. Mittelt snorted out a laugh. And who said we wanted to be? Mittelt said, crossing one leg over the other as swinging her foot in uppity ebullience, she hummed to herself thoughtfully, though, being so alienated from my senpais, may cause me some grief over a bit of time. Mittelt tried holding it in, but it proved too much for her and she laughed again, an unpleasant, cruel sound that echoed in the almost empty room. Rias grit her teeth. Perhaps she would only keep the fallen angels around until after the raiding games. It sounded a bit too harsh at first, but these beings really were beyond redemption. She held little doubt in her mind that they had each done unspeakable things, and not just what they did to Asia. She really hated to communicate with such barbarous souls on a daily basis. Shoving all of that out of her head as violently as possible, she rested her head in one of her hands and stared out the window. Within moments, she gained a far away look in her eyes. Is it really almost time, already? The girl wondered to herself. She let out a sigh. She needed a distraction, she decided. Getting up, she left the room, ignoring the still giggling lowly that flew lazily above her. The blonde ceased her amused laughter and stared after the beauty below. You can leave, tell your friends they do not have to report here tonight. You'll each have the day off tomorrow. Mittelt blinked. An involuntary glower crossed her face, not only from the girl's aloof dismissal, but also from what the girl said. Friends, Mittelt asked harshly, more to herself than to the devil below her, that's rich. Rias paused in her steps for a second, then left. Mittelt's scowl deepened. T-C-H. She floated down onto a couch below, no respect from teenagers these days. 
She reigned in the peerless room, content with being left on her own. For about twenty seconds, arg, so bored. She crowed, rolling around on the couch, maybe I'll go annoy Cal Chan some more. XXX. Calawarner Sama, a chorus of voices yelled. The woman's eye twitched at yet another annoyance on her path out of this cesspool of adolescent idiocy. It was her first day, posing as one of the students with a light transformation. Her features were less sharp and woman-like, but her eyes still betrayed the cold soul she possessed. Though she looked more like a teenager, her s stayed the same, not losing their regular size or buoyancy, causing a lot of unwanted attention. She tilted her head downward to what must have been twenty guys all bowing to her, heads low. We are all humbled by your presence. A boy at the front, with short-cut hair that sat on his head like a miniature porcupine screamed, possibly the leader of this disgusting fan club, please, you may ask us anything. We'll even lick your feet while you insult us if that is what you desire. Steam poured out of his nose and his cheeks reddened at the enticing prospect. She grimaced in distaste. Get away from me, you revolting scum. She uttered, flipping her hair over her shoulder as she walked past them. If anything, they seemed even more eager to serve her. She did her best to ignore the lustful stares that she could actually feel from behind her, before just sending them off with a glare of unfathomable wrath, forcing a wave of dark energy to cascade around her, like the silhouette of the devil itself. Even the horny teenagers, as obsessed as they were, knew to get the hell out of the girl's sight. They disbanded hastily. She sighed irritably. If this was what she would have to deal with in her everyday life as a third year, she wouldn't hold herself responsible for the deaths of all the pervs watching her. Yo, Calawarner, right. She jumped slightly, startled. Turning quickly, she saw the blonde boy from the other night. She didn't even sense him. What do you want? She asked gruffly, not at all in the mood for conversing with the boy who got her into this mess in the first place. Well, I was wondering if you knew where Rainer is. Naruto said, scratching his cheek with an awkward grin. She raised an eyebrow. And why would you be interested in seeing Rainer Sama? He chuckled sheepishly. I was sorta hoping to break the ice, you know. And you two seem close, I guess. Her being all scared of me is weirding me out. He shook his head. Don't get me wrong, what you guys did to Asia Chan was seriously screwed up, but I'm willing to bury the hatchet if you guys want to, and I'm sure Asia Chan would as well. Calawarner looked him up and down. Truly, Rainer Sama was the strongest out of all of them, yet she did seem frightened just by the sight of this foolish-looking boy. He was strong, she admitted, but nothing to be scared of. That is, unless Rainer Sama witnessed something that Donaseek, Mittelt and she hadn't. The boy hadn't even used magic in the fight against them, after all. Perhaps he possessed something more than he let on. I doubt she would want to speak with you, you'll just waste your time. Warner said, turning her full attention to him. Despite her better judgment, she was intrigued by the mysterious boy. What did he have that made even her superior wary? Whatever. He shrugged, I guess I'll just talk to her later. His eyes steeled, oh, and also, if you try to do anything to Asia Chan again, I won't just leave it at a bruise to the head. Later, the boy waved casually and walked out the gate, leaving her behind. Asia wasn't joining the peerage, her faith preventing her, but the group of impure angels were at the school that she was attending. Naruto had to give at least a token warning, in case they got any ideas. Either way, he would protect her. Asia was with some new friends at the mall apparently, already becoming one of the more popular girls in school, as were the fallen angels who transferred. Well, Rainer, Mittelt and Calawarner were, he wasn't really sure about Donaseek. Naruto decided to push all of that from his mind. He wanted to do something. Unconsciously, Calawarner brought a hand to the side of her face where the bruise still resided as Naruto left. She scowled darkly. If that boy seriously thought he was above her from that one small bout, he had another thing coming. Rainer Sama must have just been overreacting, there was no way a boy so young could be more skilled than them. She started her trek to her peers' home, deciding to get out of the perimeters of school before another crowd of guys found their way in front of her. Cal Chan. Calawarner facepalmed in aggravation. What she wouldn't give to stab the infuriating munchkin that was mittelt in the face without having to fear any repercussions. She decided to save it for her dreams. XXX. All right Cubs, what news you got for me? I'll promise to tell you, if you never refer to me as, Cubs, again. Deal. Naruto was currently at the hot springs located a few blocks from the school. He sat, 
shirtless with a towel around his waist, on top of the heated water, not seeing a problem with discretion with no one being there at the moment. He decided since he was in the most relaxing place he could think of, he would get a status report on what was going on from his furry friend. Don't call me your furry friend either, brat. Oh right, he could read his thoughts. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly. He he he, sorry about that. Kayubi let out a growl of irritation. Your chakra pathways are basically restored, thanks to me. Kurama informed his jailer. You can go wild with that cage bunshin jutsu, shadow clone technique, of yours, as well as the Rasengan, spiraling sphere, and any of your other advanced techniques. On top of that, due to you having your chakra back, you are able to access sage mode safely. You'll be able to perform biju mode within another week, once I re-establish our fractured connection. Kurama said, somewhat smugly. Hell yeah, Naruto fist pumped in his jubilance, so we have a shot of going back now. Frankly, no, the beast reported flatly. Naruto's smile dropped. What? Why? If you try to go through that dimensional transit way again, I'm not sure if I could fix you back up once you make it back, if I could even fix you at all. The Nine Tails admitted, it might have only been luck that got you through it in the first place, and perhaps there are unlimited realities that you could fall into. Either way, it is likely that if you make the trip again you'll be torn apart, leaving nothing of you left. Kurama said, much to Naruto's dramatically decreasing felicity. Oh, Naruto thought plainly, not really sure how to respond to the news. Don't worry about it too much, though. The tailed beast said, not really used to giving reassurance. In fact, he couldn't recall ever committing the act. Perhaps he was going soft. How am I supposed to not worry? He thought, running both of his hands through his wet hair violently, as if that would find him his answers. I might not ever get to see Sakura chan again or Kakashi Sensei, Uruka Sensei, Granny Hokage, hell even Sasuke. They're all waiting for me, and I can't even get to them. Well, that's even if we're in the same time zones. Hundreds of years could have already passed in the elemental nations. Kayubi informed instinctually. Gee, thanks for the comforting thought. Naruto sighed, his chakra dissipated from inside his body, allowing himself to submerge under the water he sat on top of. Already dead, it was a depressing thought. It really didn't leave him with much. If he was just able to get some kind of evidence that they were still out there, or get a clue as to how he could make another leap through space, then maybe it would take some of the weight off his shoulders. Sorry, the word sounded so alien, especially coming from that voice. Naruto's head emerged from the water a few seconds after going in. He leaned his head back on the wet concrete. Don't worry about it, he said aloud to the empty room. Or at least, he thought it was empty. Eek. A boy, Naruto blinked at the distinctly feminine voice. Tilting his head further back, he got a view of an upside-down girl. She had dark black pigtails, a childish face, large ass, and currently had a towel draped over her important bits, Sona Tan. There's a boy in here. You are in the wrong side of the hot springs, Onisama. An incredulous voice called from the dividing wall near Naruto. He sweat dropped when the girl in front of behind him half glared, half pouted at him. Mo. That doesn't change the fact that this pervert defiled my body. Only my cute Emotu Tan can do that to me. She ran quickly out of the room, calling over her shoulder all the way back, you wait here you scoundrel. Once I get my magical girl's outfit on I'll deal with you. She promised. Nartudo sat there for a few seconds in disbelieving silence before getting up, grabbing the drenched towel and putting it around his waist again. He shook his head to get some of the moisture out and get some of the spikiness back to his hair. That's my cue to leave, he said to himself, passing the girl who was rummaging through the lockers and mumbling something about her, magical wand, silently. Maybe the hot springs weren't as relaxing as they used to be. He blamed his godfather. Before that old hermit went there it was always a safe haven, now it was just bothersome. He still needed time thinking, so he decided to go somewhere peaceful to get his thoughts together. He scratched his head, wondering distantly as he walked out why the other girl's name was so familiar. XXX. Rhea stared silently at the blue sky above her from the bed of grass under her. She sat in the shade of a tree in one of Kuo's biggest parks. So far, she hadn't found a distraction to the wedlock that kept making its way into the forefront of her mind. If only there were something she could. Whoa, hey. The girl in question blinked and looked around, unable to find the voice, up here. She could almost hear the amusement in the voice above. Turning her head skyward, 
she was met with the bright features of one, Naruto Uzumaki. Brilliant blue eyes stared back at her, his sun-kissed blonde hair and school uniform waving lightly in the gentle breeze. Rias shook off her shock of seeing one of the strangest people in her recent life sitting above her, using one of the branches as his own seat. Naruto-kun, the one and only, he said with no real energy, dropping down from his wooden seat next to her. He gave the girl a look, what are you doing here? He honestly didn't expect to meet anyone he knew outside of school again today. Just thinking, she said vacantly, she returned his look, what about you? What are you doing in the park? I'm doing the same thing. He responded, looking out to a group of kids playing their parents. He frowned. Must have been nice. Friends and family. Hey Rias, have you ever felt, I dunno, trapped? Like no matter what you do, you can't get out of this situation you found yourself in. He looked her in the eyes. She seemed surprised by the question, but answered nonetheless. Yes. She answered honestly, put off by the uncannily similar thoughts the boy seemed to be sharing with her. Naruto looked at her face, finding no dishonesty. He didn't really expect any from her. The girl had been rather hospitable, even in the odd circumstances. His earlier views of her apparent benevolence clashed with what he had seen her to recently. She was able to make level-headed decisions, but she was willing to let innocent people die if it didn't line up what she wanted, like Asia Chan. Even if a war could have ensued. He also understood that he was under her care not because she wanted to hold him as a proverbial prisoner, but because she was obligated. But, again, it was annoying beyond belief allowing her to believe she held anything over him. He could dispatch of her, and probably the entire club if he so desired. So it was irritating listening to their disbelief in his abilities. He wasn't sure if she deserved his patronage, in whatever she was caught up with at the moment or if he should hold her somewhat cold decision of Asia's survival over her until he finally figured out a way to get back home. Yet, despite her coldness in the face of logic, or her annoying sense of obligation for why getting up and dusting himself off. And no, she turned away from him, well, it's not like I, when she looked back he was gone, not even hearing her sentence. She felt a twinge of disappointment. His presence was really calming her down. An idea suddenly took hold in her mind. One that included her blonde friend. She hadn't thought of such a thing before. Her face scrunched up not only in thought, but also in doubt if she could really pull it off. She had self-respect, so it was a difficult prospect to wrap her mind around, but if she truly wanted the wedlock to become invalid it might have been the only way. Riser Fenex was a terrible individual, to be sure, but he and his peerage were strong. Stronger than her. It wasn't like he could just bully her into marrying him but the guy was probably despicable enough to threaten her cute servants. Plus, it wasn't like going against her family was a better alternative. She steeled her mind. Her parents were past just the usual pressuring. They would act soon, so she had to act sooner. XXX. What the hell are you doing in my apartment? Naruto asked the bewildering man sitting on one of his couches. He had just gotten back to his 33rd floor apartment rom and was ready for some downtime, when this guy appeared. Well. I had something I wanted to tell you. You weren't in here so I decided to let myself in. This is the room that I'm paying for, after all. Azazel reminded. Naruto shook his head in exasperation. Fine, but you gotta get out of here by the time Asia Chan comes back. I don't want you anywhere near her. So hurtful. Azazel laughed, but I wasn't planning on staying for long. I just thought I should inform you that the four great satans want you in the underworld soon. They wish to have a meeting with you. Naruto's eyes narrowed. Do you know why? Azazel shook his head. Negative. But if I were to guess, I'd say they want you to meet with Beelzebub for some evaluation. Beelzebub. Who the hell is that? Naruto asked, hands in pockets, now leaning against the head of the large couch Azazel sat at. Azazel shrugged. The one who created the whole peace system that didn't work on you. Azazel pointed at the boy. He was understandably quite confused. I believe he wishes to meet with you, as do the other Satans. Naruto clicked his tongue. One thing after another, huh? Naruto mused glaring into the dark room surrounding him. Don't be too mad though. Azazel said, they'll be willing to pay you for the inconvenience, at least, that's what Sirzex said. Naruto's eyes stayed narrowed. Paying me off? He asked darkly. Geez, if you say anything like that it sounds bad. Take it as it is, it's the best time in your life to be rich, you know. Azazel laughed, patting him on the shoulder. Naruto just let him. 
Naruto couldn't help but not take Rias' warning about Azazel to heart. It was hard to take him seriously when he was so damn Jiraiya-like. Plus, the man had been rather helpful, giving him all the information he asked for. The man might have been dangerous, but so was Rias' brother, and yet he felt as if he shouldn't shy away from that guy either. I'll get out of your hair, Azazel said, getting up and making for the door. He gave a lazy wave as he shut the door behind him, leaving Naruto once again. The shinobi sighed as he dropped his empty bag down on the carpeted floor in the lounge room. He took off his shirt and crashed on the couch. The place may have been big, but the room was obviously designed for a couple, as there were no other bedrooms and only one bed. Naruto slept on the couch, it being comfy enough to sleep in, while Asia had the marshmallow soft king-size bed he had slept on previously. It wasn't a big deal. He was used to sleeping on the floor in the longer missions he had partaken in while he was an elemental, so the small downgrade meant little. Ten minutes passed before Naruto realized he couldn't sleep. Not until he knew that Asia was safe with him in here. He looked out the humongous window behind him to the city skyline, seeing that it was still somewhat early, he rammed the back of his head into the pillow and sighed. Maybe I should go for a run and jump around the high-rise buildings. He thought. That actually sounded awesome. A lot more fun than jumping through trees. He sat up and stretched out his legs. Before he could go grab something on, a pentagram of crimson energy erupted in front of him, sending his brain into defensive mode in less than a quarter of a second. Suddenly, Rias Grimori appeared, dressed in her school uniform, halting Naruto's reflexes of smashing a high-level ninjutsu where the girl stood. Rias, he asked, what's up? Something wrong. She didn't answer. Her face still held its urgent expression. Naruto-kun, please, sleep with me, she said, forcing Naruto to do a mental double take. Huh, I've considered so many other options, but this is the only way. The girl began taking off her clothes, taking off the cape and shirt first. Naruto, still sitting, looked stunned and more than a little confused. Whoa, whoa, slow down there. What do you mean it's the only way? For what? Throwing her first articles of clothing to the side of her, she was left only in a bra and panties, the rest of her body completely exposed. She put her knees next to his legs and wrapped her arms around his head, sitting on top of him. I can't explain it to you right now. She leaned her face in front of his. He could make out the distinctly red cheeks she had at the moment, even in the darkened room, you don't want me. She asked, sounding almost anxious for his answer. Naruto's eyes unconsciously slid down her body, her barely clothed s pressing against his chest her white hips and creamy, mile-long legs draped over his own. He gulped. The girl was undoubtedly gorgeous. One of the, if not the, most beautiful girls he had ever seen. It's not that I don't. He admitted slowly, but this is a bit sudden. His self-control was waning, her scent making his mind go foggy. She adjusted herself and brought her hands behind her back. With a few practiced motions, the white bra she wore was removed. She brought her hands to her s and pushed it against her chest, keeping them covered for the moment. This is my first time, so I'm a little nervous. She admitted. Her right hand grabbed a hold of the bra, and she moved it away slowly, before letting it drop to the floor. Her s were now bare, staring back at him, s erect in the chilly room. Rias grabbed the side of Naruto's face, making Naruto look into her blue-green eyes, is it yours, as well? He shook his head silently, she looked relieved. Good, I didn't want to take it from you if you didn't want to do it. She moved her face even closer, eyes half-lidded, can you, take the lead? She asked, timidly despite the aggressive starting. Naruto nodded without thinking, lust filling his hormone-filled mind. He brushed his hands lightly up her smooth legs, stomach, and finally ending their ascent to her s. He heard her breathing hitch slightly, obviously not used to such treatment. He alternated between rubbing the tips lightly between his fingers and circling around. Low moans escaped her mouth and her cheeks reddened further. His right hand drew down again, and he looped the side of the redhead's panties with his thumb, pulling down on the fabric slowly. He leaned his head down to the side of her neck. She shivered when his hot breath tickled her skin. The blonde kissed the girl's neck gently, lining up to her jawline while he pulled her last article of clothing down further. He stopped his kissing and nibbling to look into her eyes. The girl's chest heaved, her breathing becoming heavier due to the boy's surprisingly skilled ministrations. Without thinking, she moved her lips to his. Before their lips met, however, a blinding white light erupted. Rias looked surprised, 
her eyes drawn to the light, before she sighed. Naruto, meanwhile, growled at yet another person rudely teleporting into his place. I guess we were a tad too late. A sad smile stretched the corners of her mouth, a bittersweet expression overtaking the lust-filled gaze she had earlier. A woman, looking to be in her late twenties to early thirties, appeared within the room, her beautiful face emotionless. The woman had timberwolf gray hair and the delicate features of a noble. She wore a maid outfit, which befuddled Naruto, only seeing such a thing in anime or fiction, and a large bust. She looked to him, then to the girl she came for. Attempting such a thing with this commoner. Master and Sirzex Sama will be crestfallen. The woman intoned, her voice dim, yet somehow sweet. Naruto's eye twitched. Commoner. Grafia Sama. Rias acknowledged, she stood up, looking indignant, what's wrong with giving it to someone like him? She asked heatedly, also, she put her hands on her hips, I will not allow anyone to call someone I hold dear a commoner. Not even you. Grafia stared back blankly. Finally, she knelt down to pick up the clothes Rias discarded in her attempt of rebellion. Regardless, you are the heiress apparent of the Grimori family. She put Rias' school shirt on the girl's shoulders, covering her modesty just a little more, act like it. The beautiful woman looked back to Naruto. How do you do? I am Grafia Lucifuge, servant of the Grimori family and queen of Sirzex Sama's peerage. She bowed. Naruto scratched his head at the formality, silent until then. This was all really throwing him for a loop, but his head was back on the ground. Uh, yo, Uzumaki Naruto. He pointed to himself, nice to meet ya. Her eyes widened diminutively. She looked at Rias in question. So, he's the one. Rias nodded, getting rid of any doubts in Grafia's mind. I see. She bowed again, lower this time, I apologize if I have offended you. It is an honor, Uzumaki-sama. I've heard much about you. Naruto shook his head. Naruto's fine. Grafia didn't give any indication she heard the boy. I will come for you tomorrow, Uzumaki-sama. Sirzex-sama has requested your presence. Of course, you may decline. Uh, yeah, sure. But again, just Naruto. He stressed. She still didn't answer. Rias-sama, Grafia said. Naruto was unable to distinguish whether it sounded demanding or not. The Grimori heiress nodded. The girl quickly walked to Naruto and leaned her face closer to his, much like before, noses almost pressing together. Naruto's senses were overbared with her feminine presence yet again. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun. I wasn't thinking straight. She kissed him on the cheek, her lips lingering for a second, before she removed them, I'm sorry for bothering you. She smiled apologetically. And no problem. Did he just stutter? He never stuttered, ever. Well, unless Sakura's threats of putting him through a wall were present. Thinking about the girl weighed on his heart a little bit, and looking into Rias' similar eyes didn't help. After a second of staring, Rias finally got up and stood next to Grafia. The smile never left Rias' face, even when her body lit up next to Grafia's own illuminated form. In a flash of light they were both gone, leaving a thoroughly discombobulated Naruto. What the hell was that about? He didn't receive an answer. XXX. Naruto rubbed his eyes tiredly, his hair messy and uneven with a bad case of bedhead. After the events of last night he didn't get much sleep at all. Naruto-kun, are you feeling all right? Asia asked, concerned. Naruto graced her with an exhausted smile. He didn't want to put her spirits down. The girl smiled back, bright as the sun, and nodded. That's good, she said, happy he wasn't feeling bad. Her attitude suddenly took a complete turn, and the girl bunched her hands together in apprehension, um, do you, you see anything different about me? She asked, sliding some hair behind her ear instinctively, highlighting a hair decoration that rested in her golden hair and an azure blue ear piercing hanging from her earlobe. Naruto blinked. Huh, you got an earring, and a hair thingy. He noticed, looks good on you. He could have sworn her face actually physically glowed in her happiness. Thank you, Naruto-kun. She yelled in elation. Naruto's smile became a little more natural and he let out a chuckle, and he patted the girl's head. The girl crowed about how she had her first shopping trip with her new girlfriends while he petted her. He listened vacantly, mind more at just what had happened the other night. Why would Rias come onto him like that so suddenly? And why would it concern her brother, or his peerage? He would ask the girl for answers. The duo made their way into class, sitting down at their desks. Naruto looked at the timetable he pulled from his pocket, taking his mind off of all that had happened. 
History. Huh. He was down for that. History was one of the only cool subjects he had at school, right behind gym and shop class. Leaning back, he waited for the teacher. And waited. And waited. Murmurs filled the classroom as everyone wondered where the teacher was. The teacher is pretty old. Maybe he dropped dead, or something. Naruto mused. Just then, the door at the front of class slid open, drawing everyone's attention. The individual who walked through actually made Naruto smash his head into the desk. Yo, sorry for being late, I got caught up in the hallways, quite the school you have. The man's smooth voice carried through the classroom, and he smirked, I'm your new teacher, just call me Azazel. The mile he wore was positively devilish. XXX. Naruto sighed, walking from the courtyard to the occult research clubroom. He didn't do any work for Rias at all anymore, the novelty of it wearing thin quite fast, but he had to see the girl and ask her what was up. On his way there, he had to wonder about the nuances of his crazy new life. Why was almost everyone he knew attending this freaking school? Bar Rias' older brother, he had no other contacts that didn't go to Kuo Academy. Why did that weirdo Azazel even become a teacher? He seemed pretty well off already, what with spending small fortunes on goddamn alcohol. Naruto rubbed his temple and decided that that conversation was for another time. At the moment, he had only one thing that was bugging him. Are you feeling okay, Naruto-kun? Naruto was shot with a sense of deja vu. He seriously had to thank the Kyubi after this whole fiasco was cleared up. Kiba also seemed to sense the foreign presence, surprisingly. I can't believe I noticed it only now. He said, his game face on immediately. They looked at each other and nodded, a silent agreement to go faster passing between them. Kiba and Naruto entered the clubroom within moments, everyone seemed to be there. Donaseek, Rainer, Mittelt and Kalawarner were all in a group, cynical energy dripping from the side of the room they occupied. Half of the members of Fallen Angels sneered at his arrival. Akino was as far away from them as possible, making tea for Rias, who sat at her oak wood desk. Kaneko was reading on one of the couches, not even turning to look at them. The member of the room that surprised Naruto wasn't any of them though. It was the platinum-haired woman from the other night conversing with Rias. She turned to look at the newest arrivals. Same attire, same emotionless face, and same stare. Her hands were in front of her in a silent, respectable manner. Rias' cheeks gained an embarrassed glow when she saw Naruto stare, last night still fresh in her mind. Everyone's here she said to herself, as well as the room. Milady, should I be the one to tell them? Grafia asked. Rias raised her hand to the family servant. That's unnecessary, she responded. She focused on the room. The truth is, she began, not getting any further as a fiery light erupted in the middle of the room, close to Naruto and Kiba, forcing them to jump back. Naruto grabbed at his clothes and looked down at them once he landed. His facial expression soured when he saw the scorch marks that now adorned the side and back of his new school uniform. Now he was back to zero usable uniforms. Fantastic. Kanoko put her book down, as did Akino with her tea and they stood off to the side as the dangerously hot flames continued to lick the air around the middle of the room, consuming nearby oxygen greedily. Within the contained conflagration stood a tall man. As the fires died down, the individual looked to the roof. Ah. It's been a while since I've been in the human realm. The man said wistfully. He turned, revealing the handsome features of a twenty-something-year-old man. He had a half-sneer half-smirk as everyone stared at him. Lines ran down his eyes, reminding Naruto of Itachi. No, scratch that. Itachi didn't come off as a total douchebag. At least, he didn't during the war. But the man in front of him reeked of arrogant self-entitlement. I've come here for you, Rias, my love. The man said, holding his hand out to Rias, who looked positively repulsed. Naruto looked at the stranger and Rias, then looked back at the stranger, before looking back at Rias again. The hell, was all that came to mind. What kind of entry was that? Once again, the pentagram teleporting thing turned out to be even more annoying than the Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, being so loud and bright, but this was the first time Naruto actually wanted to punch the person that was the cause of it. Not only did he barely escape the torrent of flames with just some singed clothes, but the fact that the guy said that line with a straight face, and the way he said it, like he expected Rias to fall on her knees in awe, just hit Naruto in all the wrong ways. All this equated to a pissed-off Naruto Uzumaki. And nothing good came from a pissed-off Naruto Uzumaki.
In the span of five seconds, this guy just climbed the ranks into his top 10 list of most dislikable people. And he had met a lot of heads in his ninja career. Oi, asshole, you gonna pay for my clothes that you just ruined? He asked, tugging at the black markings on the side of the expensive clothes. The man spared him a glance, and his eyes narrowed. I hate bugs like you the most. He stated, looking at Naruto as if it hurt his eyes, a commoner who's too ignorant to know his place. Deciding he spent too much time on the trash in his sight, he brushed past the now, understandably, infuriated boy. Number 4 so quickly, I dunno if I should applaud or beat the crap out of you. He was probably going to go for the latter. Naruto cracked his knuckles, smiling darkly at the man's broad back. Riser, I will not allow you to talk to my servants in such a way. Rias said angrily, her eyes narrowed in a glare. The man smirked. Naruto blinked. So that was Riser, the guy that both Azazel and Rias talked about. Now, now, is that any way to talk to your fiancé, my beloved? All of Naruto's thoughts came screeching to a halt. Fiancé. There was no way that meant the same thing here as it did back in the elemental nations. Why on earth would Rias get married to that guy? The other members all looked rather shocked as well, except for Grafia, Akino and Rias herself. The girl's eyes narrowed further. I told you last time, Riser, I will not marry you. Come now, my delicate flower. He brushed one of the girl's crimson locks behind her ear, causing her to swat the offending hand away, your family has its back to the wall. The underworld needs more pure blood, high-class devils. You know how rare they are. Are you really willing to be so selfish? He asked his other hand going down her skirt. She moved back, removing his other hand. Leave now, Riser. Neither you, nor my family can force me into such disgrace. She was suddenly pulled back by her arm, forcing her to come face to face with the man she despised the most in this world. I will not allow you to sully my honor. She scowled when he took her chin into his hand, I will bring you back to the underworld with me, even if I have to burn all of your servants to a crisp. His eyes glowed orange like fire and Rias own shifted to a dangerous red color. Naruto stepped forward but didn't have to intervene as Grafia took control. Please calm down. They turned to look at the woman, her gray eyes stared back at them blankly, Milady, Riser Sama. I am here on behalf of Sirzek Sama, so if conflict breaks out I will not stand idly by. She said seriously. Riser took his hand away from Rias' face and brought his arms up, attempting to be placating. When it's you, the mightiest queen, saying that, even I am scared. His smirk betrayed what he said, but he understood her power nonetheless, so he stayed his hand. Grafia nodded. He predicted this might happen. Grafia hands remained where they were, not even needing to lift a finger to intimidate them both. She still had both Riser and Rias in her sights, ensuring no fight would happen while she was there. As such, I have been tasked to carry out a last resort if neither of you are able to reach an agreement. What are you proposing? Rias asked, if you insist on your position, a rating game will be used to settle the issue. If you accept, you will both be given 10 days to prepare. I accept, Rias said, not even needing to give the proposition thought, Riser, I challenge you to a formal rating match. I don't see a problem with that, Riser said, smirking, but, just to make sure, are these all of your servants? So what if they are? He laughed, with a snap of his fingers, another pentagram appeared this time carrying over a large number of beautiful girls. Everyone's eyes widened, except Naruto's. Naruto was just trying to keep track of what was going on. He looked around the room to gauge everyone's reactions. Though Kiba, Akino and Kaneko all looked rather shocked, the fallen angels all had different reactions. Rainer and Kalawarner both looked aggravated, both of their arms crossed and looking as if they wanted no part in anything. Mitelt was just staring at Riser and smiling swinging her legs from her spot on the windowsill. Donaseek was also smiling, though, his smile was malevolent and challenging. Looking at the group of girls, Naruto's mind clicked. If he was correct, then this whole raiding game thing was a showdown between peerages, and that was the bastards. Most likely fighting, or, at least hopefully. Naruto couldn't wait to knock that smirk off of Riser's smug face. I have 15 servants myself. He informed, in other words. A whole set, Akino said worryingly from beside Naruto. Correct, Riser confirmed, the bright fires resting behind him, not seeming to burn any of the servants at all, so Rias-chan, are you sure you want to do this? 
or are you going to be smart and prevent any hurt that will come to you and your servants? My servants are ready and I are ready for you, Riser. She said without hesitation, glaring death at the man. Anyone who insulted her family, blood-related or otherwise, was going to feel her wrath, I swear that I will bring you down. I look forward to it, he said nonchalantly, walking over to his set. He wrapped his hand around one of the pieces' shoulder, the one with unbelievable sized s, even by this world's standards, I'll see you soon, my love. He winked, before him and his peerage burst into flame. When it dissipated they were all gone. Okay, so ten days from now we get to kick that guy's ass. Naruto asked loudly, getting the attention of all occupants in the room. Even in the stiff atmosphere left from Riser's departure, he managed to bring some smiles. Some. I really hope you're not as moronic as you sound. Warner said, spoiling Naruto's good mood, there's no way I'm going to compete in your devil's stupid game for such meaningless stakes. She crossed her arms under her impressive bust and scowled. Whether we win or not determines your freedom. Rias said, smiling inwardly at her plan. Each of the impure angels looked at her simultaneously, and she could have sworn she heard at least on neck crack. Freedom. Rainair asked suspiciously, surely you must be joking. Rias shook her head. If we win this, you are all free. And only if we win. Otherwise, you will have to stay with us for a little longer. Rainair actually cringed at the thought. I'm ready. Mittelt screamed, volunteering eagerly. The rest agreed with silent nods. All right sweet, let's do this. Naruto fist pumped. Uzumaki-sama. The boy looked and saw that it came from none other than Sirzek's queen. She stared at him blandly. I'm afraid you are unable to take part in the upcoming games. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.